as of right now, we're very, we're very committed to going to Beer Olympics. We can't back out. We won't. We can't. I mean, I'm we not in it. We can't. Right. We can't. We can't. We can't back out. As of this moment, we, we can't, can't back we out. We cannot back out. We can't. I mean, who could who could turn that down? I'm yep. feeling pretty sick already that week before. On today's part of my take, we have our good friend JJ Redick on the show to talk some ball, break down uh, the NBA playoffs, what happened to the Lakers, what happened to the Suns, what's going to happen going forward. We're going to do Hot Seat Cool Throne. We have some awesome playoff action to talk about Tuesday night. Uh, and also the Lakers got bounced, so we'll talk about that as well. And then we'll finish with listener-submitted FAQs. Great show, and it's brought to you by our friends at DraftKings. It's Kentucky Derby Week. Are you ready for the greatest two minutes in sports? Saddle up with DK Horse, an official DraftKings affiliate. Right now, new customers who download the DK Horse app can get a 100% deposit bonus up to $250. Just deposit $25 or more and complete the playthrough requirement. Wager on your favorite horses, then watch the races at Churchill Downs live right in the app. DraftKings has you covered with a one-stop shop for all things horse racing. We're going to have Randy Moss on on Friday. We're going to get some picks. I'm going to be betting the Oaks on Friday. I'm going to be a bit in the Derby on Saturday. I'll be sharing my plays. They won't be great, but that's okay because we're going to be betting some horses on the DK Horse app. Download the DK Horse now to join the Run for the Roses action. New customers get a 100% deposit bonus up to $250 when they opt in with code TAKE only on the DK Horse app. Okay, let's go. Welcome to part of my take presented by the new DK Horse app. Download the DK Horse now to join the Run for the Roses action. It's Kentucky Derby week. New customers get a 100% deposit bonus up to $250 when they opt in with code TAKE only on the DK Horse app. Today is Wednesday, May 1st, and Tyrese Maxey is that dude. Dog. 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 Seven points in the final 25 seconds tonight. Finished with 46 mandatory points. He said it was a mandatory win. He needed every one. He was right. It was mandatory. I want to see this. I want to see this series go seven. Same, same. It was, it was a great game. The Mecca was rocking. Jalen Brunson was, was balling again. And Tyrese Maxey came and snatched souls. Joel Embiid was, you know, he was hobbling. He didn't have his best stuff. Tyrese Maxey basically saved did Tyrese Maxey save his legacy while also a legacy game for it was a double legacy game. A double legacy by Tyrese. Yeah, I think it's like uh he's you got the old dog and then the young pup. And you get the young pup to bring like breathe some life into the old dog. And Embiid was he was not himself tonight. His leg was definitely hurting. He said he had a headache before the game and he was feeling it pretty bad. Uh, but Maxey brought all the energy at the end of the game. And they're gonna need it. They're going to need it because they have to they have to try to close it out on the road in game six in Philadelphia. Yeah, yeah that's going to be a big time Knicks home game um, down at down in Wachovia, Wachovia Center. Uh, yeah, that was that was a great game. though. That was a great playoff basketball game. I thought for the last like two minutes, I was like, poor Max, the Sixers essentially just didn't let him turn this game off because even. I actually thought weirdly like the first half was when the Knicks that you don't lose the game in the first half, but they had the Sixers on the ropes. Like they felt like the Sixers were dead. It felt like the Sixers were ready to quit. Felt like half the team was ready to quit. They cut it to five at half. And then at the end of the game, Tyrese Maxey just with two of the biggest shots, the and one Mitchell Robinson. I don't know how you foul there. And then that three that he hit, that was just so perfect. Um, what a game. Max, you're back. You're alive. What are we thinking? Series series of the year is back alive. Joel Embiid may not be able to walk, 
but you have Tyrese Maxey, so you have a puncher's chance. Yeah, Tyrese Maxey was unbelievable tonight. Um, it was really something special to see. I can't believe that we've had this game and game two both in the same series. Like, I would love to know. Like, they they both have to be, like, 99% on, like, that ESPN yeah. thing of, like, teams to lose. And then Win probability, both, yeah. both times that they've lost. Maxie was absolutely incredible. The, the four-point play no one's talking about. The fact that he was able to get Mitchell Robinson. Everyone's talking about that. about it. He no, just it, talked it, about how you can't every, follow that. Everyone but, is talking about how great that play was. But the th- I mean, Hank, the three was. Hank, say how good that play was. It was an impressive play. The fact that he pulled it off was insane. Jake, yeah. talk about that play. It was so amazing. Really. Everyone's talking about that play. Everyone's man. literally everyone's talking about the play. <laughs> okay, no one's talking about the lo- the logo three that he hit to tie it up. <laughs> uh, right, it was so awesome. It, is, it, it does yeah. feel like this is a trade off from game two. You yeah, no. lost one, you should have won. Now you stole one back. Like I was just thinking about like that when I went through that run of tweets being like, I can't believe we lost that game. I can't believe we lost that game. I can't believe we lost that game. Immediately after this, I was, we were driving to softball. The only thing I was thinking, like, I can't believe we won that game. I can't believe we won yeah, that game. I it was, it was game. over. There's 28 seconds Done. left. It Done. was, it was a six point game. Josh Hart has, uh, or no, Josh Hart had a, a two free throws after that, but six, six point game, you get the, the four point play. Then Josh Hart goes one for two. And the three, like that was over. You should win games when you're up six points with 28 seconds left in the NBA. And now, Max, what, I mean, what are you going to, like, is Embiid going to be able to walk? I don't know. Embiid, honestly, Embiid, the turnovers were really, really bad from him tonight. But I was a little bit impressed that he was able to make an adjustment for his game, knowing that he wasn't going to be like his dominant self, like driving to the basket, backing down Mitchell Robinson. Because like he isn't strong enough right now to do to do what he normally can, but he was passing the ball like really really well. Mm-hmm. It's just that sometimes he got reckless with it with the turnovers. I, it sucks that he had the turnovers because this would be like a moment that you could look at and be and be like, it was nice to see that. Yeah, he's hurt. He's obviously playing hurt, but he was able to do something like still beneficial for for the offense. Yeah, uh, but the turnovers were just so fucking bad. And credit to you, you never gave up on Tobias Harris. He had a huge game. That's stick with your guys. I think later in this show, I gave up on Tobias Harris, but yeah, Yeah, we had a really big game. It's a good thing. You also didn't give up on buddy healed because Tyrese Maxey gave credit for the win to buddy healed today. He said he gave him a quick shout out. He said he was on the bench. Uh, I guess that was the only minute that Maxey was on the bench. He spent talking to buddy healed and he was upset. He had missed free three throws, turned the ball over, Buddy healed grabbed me and said, listen, dude, you know what you can do. Go out and make up for it. I really appreciate Buddy for that. Yeah, Buddy was like, "You got to go shoot because I'm not going to." So he got please it done. Go shoot. But Credit yeah, to Buddy that, Hield. that clip uh, they showed the wide cam uh, of Maxi after uh, oh, or after regulation, and he was just so fucking pumped up and like to steal that moment from the Knicks because that crowd was crazy. Knicks fans are crazy. And that was, I mean, it was just an awesome playoff game. Also, shout out to your guy, Patum, with incredible, incredible defense, both at the end of regulation and the end of OT, uh, being able to stay with Jalen Brunson as he drive to the, to the hoop. And he had two huge, I think the first one was a block. I don't know if the second was a block, but he was just all over him. Like, those were, those were game-defining plays, being able to stay with him there. I yeah, thought there was no way Brunson wasn't making that shot to, to yeah. win it. Like yeah, yeah. he like, kind of got a step on Batum and he Batum's just so long. He, he was able to block that shot again. Yeah. No one's talking about that either. No one's talking about that. I just talked about it. I just talked about it. It, it was, a, it was a great play defensively. And then at the end of overtime, I think he kind of got in the way Brunson wanted to pass the ball and I forget who it was in the corner, made a step towards the basket and, uh, and Brunson passed it out of bounds, but he probably wouldn't have fucked it up that bad if Batum wasn't in his face. Yeah, no, it was, it was an awesome, awesome game. I wanted to go seven. Um, we're going to watch game six with Max. We'll have clips for it. Uh, also, tune into JJ Redick. I give him an idea for how to give Joel Embiid more minutes, which I actually think Nick Nurse might do in game six. If we can get him the message, my idea might work. Uh, all right, other games. These are the games, like game fives are the best because they, like, you can't fuck around a game five. We saw the the Nuggets. Like, if they had let the Lakers stay around and get into game six, your problems, now you have 
the Sixers still alive and you have the Bucks still alive, which was crazy because it felt like with no Dame and no Giannis, the Pacers, I think the Pacers probably thought this too. Like, we're just going to show up and, and win this game easily. And then Pat Bev happened. He was fucking insane in the first half. And the Bucks, second quarter. Yeah, he was awesome. He was everywhere. He was basically like I, he did the too small on Tyrese Halliburton, which like that's why I love Pat Bev because he got embarrassed on on the game winner uh, game three. I want to say, yeah, game three. Uh, but it doesn't matter because it's just next fight. He's just he, he gets off the mat and he's he, he'll do a too small on him. No problem. But the Bucks, I, I mean, they dominated too. Bobby Portis. Chris Middleton, everyone's stepping up. Bucks are the Bucks. Are the Bucks going to win this series if Giannis comes back? The Bucks are alive for sure. And what happened in the last game was they just had everybody get hurt or ejected from the game. So yeah. Bobby Portis didn't get ejected this time, uh, and then uh, Middleton, his knee's okay. So I guess I guess they'll be fine. Yeah, I mean, I think it, they'll be fine. I think I don't think that they're like they probably won't be favored to win this series even with Giannis coming back. But if they can get it to a game seven, then yes. The the um I think Giannis was a game time decision today. Like I feel like th- this is when I uh have to take a step back and realize that I am actually a pussy in my own real life, but when I project on other players uh of sports I'm watching, I'm like, dude, how can Giannis not play tonight? Like, how can you not play? <laughs> but he's really you just, gotta, you just gotta <laughs> want it. You I gotta would play. want it. And and yeah. we've been We've been desensitized to injuries. We're like, oh, it's a, it's a sprained MCL. You can yeah. play on that because, yeah. like, Philip Rivers did one time, and we're like, oh, that's not that's not a problem. Yeah, I tweak my knee. I'd play. No, pr- I, I would I would play. I'm just gonna say right now, I you can't keep me out of game five with the season on the line. So uh, if I yeah, I would come hell or high water. I would play in a game five unless I got less than six, six hours of sleep. Yeah, then I would probably be like, you know what, game time decision. I'm out. I'm sick. Yeah, I don't no. feel good. Uh, also, the Cavs magic this this series. Now, this Max applies. No one's talking about. Um, my two thoughts from this game were: Paolo is that guy. He was awesome. Uh, kind of ran out of gas, and then Evan Mobley is just an absolute freak defender because that block on Wagner, uh, where he was like, it was people are you know it was a pick and roll at the top with Paolo and. Magic fans, I understand, are like, give it to Paolo. He, like, live and die with Paolo there. Like, give it back to him. But I think he had a step, and just Evan Mobley is so good that it doesn't matter if you have a step on Evan Mobley. He'll recover, and he'll block the shit out of you. It was awesome. And no Jared Allen, and and Evan Mobley, Mobley stepped up. Yeah, Mobley, he's been a guy that for the last three years has had, like, two different times each year where people are like, I think Mobley's becoming a superstar. It's just been it's been a slow progress for him. But defensively, he's a beast. He's a monster. He's so good defensively. And, uh, and my good friend Marcus or yeah, Mark is Marcus Morris, right? Made those threes down the stretch. I yeah, love to see it, that. Love to see the Morrises contribute whenever possible. My question is if this goes seven, are they gonna put it on something other than NBA TV? No, this feels like it's NBA TV. <laughs> it's just NBA TV all the way. The Pacers have to win two consecutive championships to get off NBA. The, the finals will be on NBA TV if the Pacers are in it. Oh, man. Yeah, it feel, it, it, it's, it's, it's kind of a slap in their face, but it also kind of makes sense. No offense to either team. But, yeah, you just see the schedule and you're like, all right, NBA TV again. I guess that's what yeah. we're doing. Um, should we talk about Monday night at all? We should. Well, you know what? Let's we, talk about we could, Hank. We could talk hockey for a second. Oh, yeah, let's talk hockey for a second. Let's talk hockey for a second. We're going to have some hockey. We're going to have a hockey guest on Friday and possibly Monday as well. Um, so we're going to get more into hockey. I know that we haven't had uh, Biz or Wit on. They have busy schedules. Biz is doing TNT. Wit is making everyone in the world angry. Uh, series are ending, though. We have series ending. The Islanders are out. The, the uh, Jets are out. Who else is out? Panthers uh, knocked out the Lightning. The Lightning are out. Or, yeah, the, the Lightning are got swept. Or no, I they, the, they won one game. I thought the Bruins were going to win tonight because the Leafs didn't have Austin Matthews. Yes. and But what happened? They they actually lost to the Leafs. In overtime? I think, I think oh it was God. overtime, yeah. Damn, Hank. Can you confirm? Just got to keep it interesting. Uh, just got to win, win one in Toronto now. 
it's a tough it's tough to win in the playoffs. Uh, you know, the Leafs are a good team. They they battled through adversity tonight, and and we got to come back stronger. Put Swayman in the net, and and we're gonna win. Now we might say that this was maybe Ryan Whitney's doing. We'll get into Ryan Whitney a little bit later, but yeah. I feel like this one was for Ryan. Yeah, but we, I mean, the the weirdly, I think we were talking about it on Sunday, but the NHL playoffs, it's usually there'll be like multiple game sevens in the first round and some of these like tight series, but it's it hasn't been that way this year. Like the 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 Knights and Stars series is awesome. That one feels like it's going to go seven, but every other series is, and I obviously we'll see what happens to Leafs and Bruins, but a lot of these series are over and we're already on to the second round. I thought the Islanders were going to win tonight. I really did. Memes? I thought so, too. And then they scored eight, uh, two goals in eight seconds again. Yeah, that was, that was bad. Sucked. Am I freezing or is someone else freezing? You're freezing. Shit. Fuck. Can you hear me? Yeah. I don't know what happened. You're back me- now. All right. Memes, can you say it again? Which part? The whole thing. Yeah, it sucked. They scored two goals in eight seconds again. Nah, fuck, I'm freezing. Uh, that happened again? again? Yeah. Again? Are you guys two there? Goals in, yeah, two goals in eight seconds. Yeah, we're here. All right, I'm freezing. Memes, can you say that again? I froze. <laughs> it went two, go- two goals froze. in eight, se- eight seconds again. And it sucked? It sucked. Wait, okay. I think I just froze. I think I just froze. I think I just froze. Memes, what did you say? So it went maxi three pointer from the logo, two oh, goals, eight Islanders. seconds again. The same exact thing as game two, except reversed. Actually, it went maxi four point play, four then point maxi three no. pointer from the logo. For yeah, the but it went it went logo tie, two goals, eight seconds. And I think I froze it's again. Tough. You got to say it one more time. Sorry, you just have to. All right, for so us, the, the, the Hurricanes scored one goal, and they scored another goal seven <laughs> seconds after that. Oh my God! All right, wait, hold on. Let's let's do this. Yeah, just so time it out. Who, who missed the game? All right, so I'm gonna say it right now. Ready? Uh, uh-huh. Okay. The the Panther the Hurricanes just scored. Man, that must have sucked for Islanders fans. Well, maybe we'll get don't another one. one here. Just don't oh, one. the Hurricanes just scored again. Oh, that shit. was how fast it was. <laughs> Who's that, that fast? <laughs> oh no, memes. Tough night for memes. Um, oh. Hank, I think we have to have an intervention. I want cock, cocky Hank back. You can't. It's like I can't. I can't cocky live. Cocky Hank. Let me live. How about cocky that? Cocky Hank. Cocky, cocky Hank. Hank. You're so cocky much better than Hank. the Heat. Cocky Porzingis Hank. might be hurt. It's not oh, about the dude. Heat. He's hold on. Oh, wait, wait. Is, he's he's only going to be wait, out hey. a minimum of several games. Hank, what did you just say? You said it's not about the heat. I thought we we're taking this one series at a time. See, this is, oh. I'm not doing this shit. I refuse Come to do on. this. I absolutely Cocky refuse. I'm not gonna, you can't like no, Cocky no, no. Hank. I just tried. I I made one comment. Then it's like, oh, I thought you were a coggy. <laughs> I'm, I'm not doing this. I'm sticking I'll, my guns. Also, the rest of the East is just going to be dead after this yeah. first round. Yeah, like it's setting what happened up tonight. What happened tonight in in Indiana, Max or Milwaukee? Cocky Wherever. Hank, what are you I just want about? you to just go heel turn and just be like, "I'm back." Cocky Hank have Giannis or Damon, and they still won. Teams can win. It's the playoffs. These guys are professional athletes. They're Did you here call to Damon? win. Damien. Oh, Dame in or Dame? Was that a cell phone? Da- was it Dame in or Damien? You're, hold on, you froze. <laughs> <laughs> Hank, can we? What about no. tomorrow? Please, I just want cocky Hank back so bad. He's uh, not. He's not. No. No. You're just not even going to negotiate with us. If I I did negotiate with you last night, I said if the if the Nuggies can lose this game, then then we might be in business. But they didn't. Shit. There's got to be. Do you have like a side chat, like a side podcast that you record where you are, where you are cocky Hank, and you're not giving it to us? Yeah, it's my my group chat with my friends from home. Okay, how about this, Hank? How about this on Thursday's show after the Celtics beat the Heat four uh, one? How about you? We, we'll we'll buy you a mask, and we can just we can see what we won't call you Hank. We'll call you something else, and we can just see what the cocky Hank brain is saying but yeah. we won't hold you accountable for it 
So we'll, it's like is- every, all AWS have to have to agree. We will not hold whoever shows up to the studio on Thursday Cock accountable you. for what they say about the Celtics. Fair? No. That's I mean, good I, for I the show. It, That's good for the show. You can you can you can clip every time we talk about the Celtics the whole year. I've pretty much said like we we just got to stay healthy. And then what happened in, in game four when Porzingis goes out, it looked like he was done for the season. Like the fact that he might come back is is a is a benefit, but if Dude, he's out, the the whole their whole game plan, the whole the way their team plays is completely different. A a minimum of several games. That's not that bad. But you saw the injury. It looked like an, it was a non contact. He he knew he was hurt right no, it away. Looked bad. It looked bad. I just I'm laughing about Woj. I've never seen an injury say a minimum of several games. So are you? Like, who are you playing next round? Who do you want to play next round? Uh, we don't. If we make, we've got to make it past the fir- this round first. God but who do you want to play next round, Hank? Oh, I want cocky Hank. So I want to. I want to. I want to beat the Heat on Thursday. How much money do we have to give you to get I cocky want- Hank back? Um, was it what a a k? For- okay, is that we the going talk. rate? You said we that we negotiate. Like you had- <laughs> yeah, yeah, I a documentary. <laughs> That's what I'm on the hook oh, right now. You, you want us to, I'm, 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 I'm wants us to absolve him of the dunk bet. Oh, interesting. But then, all right, I would be willing to do that, but we would need full cocky Hank. Okay. Like the minute I, I need you, I would need to sign a contract and it'd be like the minute you get down or uh, do like, oh, we're taking one game at a time, the contract is null and void. I'll do that. That's fine. All right, we'll talk. We'll talk. We'll talk more. We'll talk more on Thursday. Maybe we'll bring. Maybe we'll we'll come with a plan. PFT. We got to We got to huddle up to try to get. Cocky I've got an idea. Back. We'll we'll take this offline. Okay. All right. We'll we'll bring it back to the people on uh, on Friday's show. All right. So the other the other series that we have to talk about is um, I do think the Lakers might not be uh, good enough to beat the Nuggets. That might be the case. At they least, are though. They actually are. The- <laughs> no. Maybe not. Did you I see the stat 40, of the minutes they led 40, in the series? 45-minute game. They led for over 150 minutes compared to 50 minutes for the Nuggets. This is big. Uh, the the Lakers actually won the popular vote energy from you. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. It's I, like – so I, a couple of things happen. The Lakers, obviously, they get bounced out. LeBron says he's going to test free agency. Uh, Shams – I don't know, like, this is the new, this is just some nasty work from Shams. I, I actually love it because who doesn't like the post-mortem on a, a failed season? Shams has been doing this now. He did it with the Suns. He did it with the Lakers. He hit publish on an article that basically ripped the coach to shreds with anonymous sources seconds after the team gets bounced. And I got into it with Lakers fans say, like, I don't think Darvin Ham's a good coach, but the energy of Lakers fans saying, well, we led for 75% of the series. And if we had played anyone besides the nuggets, we would have probably won a series. It's so crazy to me. Like if your goal is to win a title, the Lakers were never going to win a title. They were not better than the nuggets. That's just a fact. We have enough evidence now in two years. Hey, how can you say like you play the full game for a reason? The, the, it, any team can be winning at half you you play a full game, and usually what happens in a full game when you play more than 24 minutes, the better team wins. Say this out again, PFT. <laughs> they were leading for 150 minutes. The Nuggets were winning for about 50 minutes. This is loser but energy. Again, again it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't right. matter that they led for 150 minutes because at the end of the games, the Nuggets were winning four to, times and, out and, of five times. Now, you can there you could make the case like – yeah, the Lakers probably would have had a better chance against a different team. You know how you get to be able to play those different teams? Yeah. You're better throughout the course of an entire regular season. And, and, and if you do that for all those minutes, I don't – maybe, Hank, you can look up how many minutes they would have had to lead over the regular season. You can get a higher seed, and maybe you can play against, I don't know, the Suns. The, and and this, is, this is where Lakers fans will say, Darvin Ham – screwed up the regular season. I get it. Like there was the stretch where he didn't start D'Angelo Russell and Austin Reeves. He tinkered with the lineup multiple times. It all was in the Shams piece. I get it. He's not a good coach. 
I still think that the roster is the problem that they just don't have enough guys. And the nuggets were a better basketball team, no matter how many minutes the Lakers led execution and like being able to win games late is what makes a team better. That's what makes you a better team, not leading a game for at half. They, they led at half every single game. We said it after game one, every game goes the same Lakers get a big lead. Nuggets start playing better basketball and they win the game. And that happened four out of five games. And like, it's just crazy to me that people are like the Lakers were just right there. They were so close. We did this last year when they got swept best swept you've ever seen. Like, it's crazy. They've won one. They're one and eight against the Nuggets in the last two years. Yet there are still people out there. that are like the Lakers are so close to beating the Nuggets. The best thing that the Lakers do is they make the, they make the Nuggets look awesome. They get the Nuggets in these crazy games and let the Nuggets just rip their hearts out down the stretch. And I appreciate the Lakers for that. And uh, the mayor of Los Angeles actually wanted to contribute to the same discussion that Hank's having, the loser talk. Put this in the loser talk Hall of Fame on loser talk Mount Rushmore. Mayor Karen Bass. This was uh, last night. Karen? Karen. She's a major Karen. Love it. She tweeted out, tough season, but at least we won the in-season tournament. Proud oh. of our team, Lakers. Heart, heart. Oh. How about that? That's a good silver lining. Hank, you, you led, hang the banner, led 150 minutes in the first round of the playoffs and won the in-season tournament. You, so I think PFT, you agree with me. Max, you agree with me, right? Like this is crazy pills that Lakers fans are like, we led for so much of the series that were this close to beating the Nuggets, even though we are one and eight against them in the playoffs in the last two years. Yeah, it's a, it's a, Crazy stat that they led for that many minutes, but also you play a full game for a reason, and the Nuggets were better at playing full games of basketball. It's not that hard to understand. Right. Do you know what happens when you play a full game of basketball? You get a better sample size on which team is better. That's yeah. usually what and happens. Al- and also being able to handle late game scenarios is a big part of the game too, and that has a lot to do with why the Nuggets keep winning and keep beating them. They're better overall. I think they definitely have better coaching. It's not to say that Darvin Ham, I don't know if he's a if he's a bad coach. I don't think he's a good coach. I don't think he's a great coach. I, uh, but I, I wouldn't say that this is on Darvin Ham. And if you're tinkering with the lineup during the regular season, you're doing that because you're probably not that great of a basketball team and you know that you need to get better. So it's like I, chicken or the egg. Right. I, I, I don't I don't think Darvin Ham's a good coach. I just hate that he's getting a hundred percent of the blame when and I'm not blaming LeBron. This is not a LeBron hater thing because LeBron and AD were phenomenal, but LeBron and AD are two guys that had to carry an inordinate load. And you have one of them who's 39 years old and the other who's, you know, injury prone in AD. And they just didn't have a roster with enough dudes to compete against a Nuggets team. That is the best team in the NBA. And if that's your goal is to win a championship, you do get measured against the Denver Nuggets. I mean, it sucks you played him in the first round, but I also think the Timberwolves would have beat him. I also think the, the Thunder would have beaten him. I don't understand why why we, we delude ourselves into thinking that the Lakers were right there. They were a good team. They were never a great team. Yeah, if there was a loser's bracket for this, I would. I might have – I think I would. I think I would have the Lakers first in the loser's bracket, regardless yeah. of who wins in L.A., Dallas. I think I would have the Lakers as the one seed in that. Yeah. Um so the other one, the, the Suns article was crazy because uh, Frank Vogel, poor Frank Vogel, he walks off the court and like looks at his phone. Shams has an article ready to go. And the the start of the article is a basically saying that Frank Vogel's a pussy and no one on his team respects him because uh, the story goes, Frank Vogel entered the home locker room at Footprint Center and lit into his team after his sons had fallen into a 35-4 hole and route to a loss to the Clippers on April 9th. The head that coach made it yelled, sound like his kids fell down into a canyon the way that you just <laughs> yeah, read that right there. Yeah. The, <laughs> the head coach yelled so much that his voice could be heard outside the locker room. There was only one problem. On this night, Suns players weren't buying it. The outburst seemed forced and out of character in their eyes. It continued the next day's shoot around in Los Angeles. Vogel tearing into the Suns before that night's road win over the Clippers. Vogel's eruption left players rolling their eyes. Sources briefed on the matter told The Athletic. That's some nasty stuff to be like, I got an anonymous source that we were rolling our eyes to our coach. That's the meanest thing you can do to roll yeah, your eyes. It's your coach. The article was pretty much saying when, when Vogel tried to get serious with the team, everybody was like, get the fuck out of here. You're, you're not a serious person. 
You don't Crazy. want to read that about yourself right afterwards. No. Uh, now to to dispute what uh, what Windhorse did report earlier about LeBron James and free agency. LeBron he tweeted out this afternoon. I've seen heard a lot of reports about my future. I said it last night. I'll say it again. I do not know yet, as I'm only thinking about spending time with my family and friends. When I know after speaking with the fam, my counsel, as well as my representation about it, then you guys will know. Until then, nothing. Love King. Mm. So uh, we don't know about that report, but it seems like there's somebody that's on the Suns that is leaking information like directly to Shams. If it was yeah. ready to go that quickly after the season's over. Instantly. But he's, he's fired. I, and what sucks is like everyone knows that he's going to be fired, right? I th- I think Darvin Ham's probably more likely to get fired than Frank Vogel, but I also don't know. The Suns are just a mess because they're stuck. They don't. They can't trade Bradley Beal. Their only move is they can trade. You can't trade Devin Booker because he's your future. Your only move is you can trade Kevin Durant. So they're they're fucked. Um, I just, yeah, I I I, I was thinking earlier, like the the timing of these articles, and I, no, the Suns weren't going to beat the Timberwolves. The Lakers weren't going to be the Nuggets, but you have to think it can't be great for vibes when a series is going on and guys are giving anonymous sources about how much they hate their coach. Like they're wor- they're they're more concerned with uh, making sure that right after they lose, the spin zone goes their direction than actually winning the game. Yeah, well, you have to be. It, Sean said that article ready to go in the event that they lost. It was it was time. He probably scheduled it knowing that they were going to lose. It. Dude, imagine what's on his hard drive right now. Because he's probably got one for every single team. Like he's if they lose, got, he's he's ready he's to go. One, he definitely has one for past NBA champions that have ended up winning the entire thing. Yeah, he's got a net Hank. He's got a nasty one for the Celtics if they get bounced before the finals. You know that. And he's got a real oh, he's got a vicious one for the Bucks for sure, for sure. Yeah, is that's gonna be Doc Rivers? Oh, that's gonna be. Must read. Yeah, just think yeah. about it. You, you, if you're a coach in the NBA right now, you have to have alerts on for Shams, and you have to just wait, like stay up at night, being like, "When is this article going to drop on my head, and how bad is it going to be?" Um, last thing we had to talk about, uh, we had a B delay. Bees are back. I love the B delay. It's my favorite part of baseball. I love the I love the early season brawls. I love the B delays. I love the weird injuries. That's what gets us through these dog days in uh, MLB until the All Star break. Yeah, the Arizona Diamondbacks had to delay their game against the Dodgers because there was a bee colony set up in the netting behind home plate. They better not. They killed those bees, did they not? I don't think you can. I th- I think they probably killed them. I, there, what, there they might be some, do they rehome the bees? There might be some laws. Have you ever talked to like the bee freaks out there that are oh, I know. always reminding us like six times a year that bees are dying at an alarming rate? They're, still, they're the worst. There's no way that they... They didn't rehome these bees. They fucking killed these bees. They took they, they took a, like a, a a fire hose to these bees. They bring in a beekeeper every time it happens, and this guy has to find the queen. And the, the game of baseball is delayed until this guy in a giant white suit finds the queen. It's a, it's a whole thing. It happens in baseball like at least once a year. What is it about baseball stadiums that's so attractive to bees? I don't know. It's true though. They just love they love hanging out at the ballpark. They actually. If 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 they could f- figure out a way to make bees count as fans for baseball, baseball might be back. Mm-hmm. We just use that as attendance. The White Sox. Bu- hey, oh. <laughs> a lot of buzz about this year. Yeah, there we go. The White Sox and A's need to just get some bee colonies in the outfield. They should be like, our attendance was crazy tonight. Um, okay, let's kick it to ourselves back in studio. Hot seat, cool throne. JJ Reddick, FAQs, and uh, tune in on Friday when we negotiate the return of Cocky Hank. Okay, before we get to Hot Seat Cool Throne, a quick word from our friends at Farmer's Dog. The days are warmer, the walks are longer, and one easy way to help your dog shine this season is with fresh, healthy food from the Farmer's Dog. The Farmer's Dog makes real fresh dog food and delivers it right to your door. Recipes are delivered by vet nutritionists made from real meat and veggies and portioned just for your dog, making it easy to say goodbye to burnt brown balls and feed your dog real food with real benefits. It's smart, healthy pet food. You can feel good about feeding your pup. It's the best option for dogs of all life stages because it's not kibble, it's not canned goo, it's real healthy food. 
The farmer's dog isn't just fresh, high-quality food. They also send the food pre-proportioned specifically for your dog based on their unique needs. This makes it easy to help your dog maintain their ideal weight, which is one of the biggest predictors of full, healthy life. Dogs at a healthy weight can live up to two and a half years longer than overweight dogs. I know Stella's a farmer's dog. I know Blake is a farmer's dog. We love farmer's dog. It's fresh food. It's super easy. You order it. They ship it to you. You put it in the freezer. Then you pop it out when it's ready time to eat. So go right now. Get 50% off your first box of fresh, healthy food at thefarmersdog.com slash PMT. Plus, you get free shipping. Just go to thefarmersdog.com slash PMT to get 50% off. That's thefarmersdog.com slash PMT. Okay. Hot seat, cool throne. Hank. Uh, my hot seat is is us. Uh oh. For not realizing the uh, the story that Caruso told about yes. the guy who yes. told his grandfather he got a hole in one and then his grandfather died before he could tell him it was a joke and he made the whole plaque. That was Ryan Whitney. That was Ryan Whitney. Yep. Uh, famous, uh, if you've seen his work, uh, bear fucking. Great artist. <laughs> <laughs> the artiste Ryan Whitney. The, okay, so with the Whitney thing, a lot of people are very upset about a cartoon image. Yeah. Um, Although I will agree that it's a weird choice that Whitney specifically typed into the AI generator, make the polar bear female he and, didn't, and have a person. No he didn't way. He have didn't Ryan Whitney it. will ever sniff <laughs> chat, chat GPT or he whatever. Did not AI create it. Whoever made it, whoever made it, typing in There's like give the bear, fan, I think. give the bear a skirt and a purse. The uh, <laughs> it would have worked just the same if it was just two bears fucking each other. Yeah, but it's one of my favorite internet controversies that Whitney's involved in right now. If people don't know, uh, Whitney, I actually. Think think that his tweet didn't even say like this is so funny he was like this isn't right which if he's kind of agreeing that it's not right he was uh, posting for awareness of not to share it yeah it's an yeah. ai image of a, a bear in a bruins jersey fucking a bear in a maple leafs jersey uh and people are very upset they immediately went to uh sexual assault and i can't believe you posted this it, it's one of my favorite controversies because it just reminds me that we might be the only sane people left because yeah. I w saw that image and I didn't think I was just like, oh, this is just stupid. Like fans talking shit back and forth. I saw it's the bears. I They're saw, AI bears. I saw the image and I was like sports. Yeah. I thought about sports. They're AI bears. The polar bear was crying. It's like getting mad at, at uh, whatever Calvin pissing on a team's logo. Right. Yeah. They're, That's actually child pornography. Yes. Yeah. Good point, Hank. He said, uh, Leafs fans, I feel for you guys. This ain't right. So, if anything, Whitney's yeah. agreeing with you. Yeah, this ain't on, right. He's on your side. This ain't right. But uh, Sometimes, yeah. I, I think yesterday was a, a big gap in things to be mad about online. Yeah. So, you just need somebody to be pissed off about, and that happened to be Whitney. We stand with Whitney. Unbelievable that uh, an AI – it was great, too, when people would just like – If I saw some people replying, and then someone would be like, Oh, so any cartoon is okay? It's like, dude, it's bears. Yeah. What are we talking about? They're AI. It's not real. So the Taylor Swift <laughs> stuff, I I understand where she's coming from because she's a human being. Correct. Uh, these are bears, and also the bears aren't representation of actual bears that Correct. exist that we all know and love and yes. care about. They're just generic bears. Also, here's a little tip. You got to always look for context clues. The bears are fucking on ice. First of all, I don't think bears know how to... Well, actually, no. There's probably Russian bears that know how to skate. Oh, polar bears. Yeah. For sure. uh, but in the background, there's a, two Bruins banners and then a Maple Leafs banner. This isn't a real arena. No. This isn't real. This isn't a real arena. Also, I saw that. I was like, oh, my God. This is a fake arena. Are they title banners or are they just... No, like they're just decorative. banners. So at first I was like, oh, my God, the bears are fucking. This is a horrendous image to look at. And then I saw the banners. I was like, oh, no, you're stupid, Dan. That's not real. It could be one of the outdoor games. No, it looks like it looks is that like inside. Are lights. we sure? Yeah, it looks it like could, there's a roof. It could be the, the stadium series. And it's all Bruins fans. And then there's a Maple Leafs banner. It could be neutral site, neutral so, ice. I, I'm going to say, yeah, I'm actually, you know what? I'm 100% confident. I'm going to say this image isn't real. I'm going to look at it real quick. Yeah. It might be real. That no. That might have happened. The banner thing. I think this is at, this might be at uh, Fenway Park. Mm. They wouldn't put up a, t a Maple Leafs banner. You don't think during the stadium series they represent no, both teams at all? Definitely not. No, come on. And it's also got a roof on it. Not real. Confirmed, not real image. Not real. I don't know how that 
hot seat turned to that, but that makes sense. Well, I mean, you brought up Brian Whitney. Yeah. He is best known for Bears fucking. That, that is my favorite recurring bit, though, that sometimes people do. If they're submitting questions for guys on Chicks or FAQs, they'll just tell a story from a movie and see if it's a movie that we haven't seen. I like that. Bad job by us. Yeah. Also, it's crucial. It wasn't on the Chicklets podcast either. It was on a different Oh, was see a, that an interview see, on like a golf podcast. That's that's not our fault. Do we think there's any chance that Caruso was just pawning the story off on his own? He did oh, say a guy. Heard, yeah, yeah, he heard. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, and then my cool throw. It's not really diva wide receivers. Just just cocky wide receivers. Uh, we've talked about it a lot. Oh my my headphones just came off. We talked about it a lot on my, uh, the show the last couple of years. Patriots uh, Javon Baker that they drafted had this quote. He said, "Bring your popcorn. I make people in wheelchairs stand up." Oh, I like that. You love that. You, you love, love that. So he cures. Yes, he cures. he's that electric that he he cures. paralyzed paralyzation. Paralyzed. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and that's nice. I like it. And he's also pumped up. He's probably feeling himself because they got Joe Milton. Yeah, that's like maybe future diva wide receiver type quote, but it's not not in a bad way. Like that's that's how you want your wide receiver to think. I wish they would actually make him prove it. Like bring him to a hospital, have him catch some balls. See if someone can walk again. He's like a uh, one of those mega church healers. The yeah, faith healers. Yeah, is Let's... everybody that's going to be a hot ticket for Patriots games? If you have a disability, show up and see if he can heal you. Shouldn't this guy be used in modern medicine more than the NFL? Isn't he squandering his abilities? Mm. I mean, he literally can cure people being paralyzed. I think. I think someone's he's... got a neck fracture, but you and have like, oh fuck, he caught a touchdown in the corner of the end zone. I'm, I can walk. Again. You have to meet them halfway. If if you really want to be healed, then you'll buy a ticket. Yeah, Buying sure. a ticket to a Patriots game, like a, a dream seat sideline pass, probably cheaper than getting back surgery. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just got to catch some CDs now. You're excited. You're I'm back excited. to being excited. Yeah, I'm excited. Okay. Very excited. Very excited. I saw that I saw that shirt design. You look very excited. Very excited. In the Drake May shirt. Still need people to subscribe on the on Spotify. Just hit that button, subscribe, get our numbers up, and then maybe we'll release the Drake May Hank Lockwood shirt. Is is that a real picture that's on there? The, oh, I didn't out, even think about that. It might not be real. <laughs> would be worse than, than it could you be think so? No. It, I think more people be. would stand up for a, a made up female polar bear than would stand up for do you know what? We should probably have Triggs update the picture and put a leaf spanner and a Bruins banner in the background so that yeah, these people can not, figure out that it's not yeah, real. Not not a real image. Yeah. Okay, PFT, your hot seat, Cool Throne? Uh, my hot seat is Jake Paul. Jake Paul is on the hot seat because they just announced the parameters for the fight against Mike Tyson. And although Mike Tyson is a heavy underdog, I think he's plus 300, um, they said that there's going to be no headgear for the fight. And it's going to be an actual heavyweight title fight. So it's going to count on their official professional records. 14-ounce gloves, but no headgear, contrary to the rumors that came out that they were going to wear headgear. So knockouts are allowed. And also, I didn't realize this, but it's going to be Taylor Serrano in the co-main event. Oh. Which actually makes, that should make real boxing fans want to buy this fight, yes, too. Yes, agreed. So I'm pumped up, because uh, I think everybody that is, most people that are paying attention to this, would just like to see another Mike Tyson knockout. Yes. Just bring us back to the, all I want. the glory days. And yes. he could be 90 years old, and I would still believe that he'd be able to knock somebody out with a Without punch. a doubt. Uh, my cool throne is Dave and Busters. Oh. Busters is on the cool throne because they are now allowing customers to bet on their arcade games against each other. Mm. So if you're competing against somebody, if it's uh, Papa Shot, if it's Ski Ball, or anything else where it's like one-on-one, -on -one, you can actually put wagers in and bet against each other at the at the table, at the games. I would like to see this expand a little bit, and anybody that's inside that Dave & Buster's should be able to get in on the action Yep. and then bet on those guys. And then we should be able to watch on like a closed-circuit TV in this office and bet on two random guys that go to Dave & Buster's and compete against each other in skee-ball. This is the future of gaming. This is the future. Everything should be gambleable. Yes, Dave & Buster's. Wow. That's what I would Their like to see. next level. I yeah. love that. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, all right, my hot seat, I have two. One is uh, inside the NBA because uh, NBC is supposedly getting closer to making an NBA deal. We might lose TNT NBA, which that would be a tragedy. They'd yeah. have to figure out a way to keep Chuck and the guys. Chuck is, by the way, having like a legendary run right now. Uh, but Kenny and Chuck and Ernie and Shaq, they have to be somewhere. Like, yeah. what are we going to do if they're not if they're not on TNT and TNT doesn't have broadcast rights for the NBA? For the good of the league, they should just go wherever the NBA goes. Yeah. Would NBC do weeknight games? I, I think so. I Like, the, 
we just can't have Charles Barkley not in our lives. I don't know how the contracts work with that, but they they should just understand that for for America, they should allow that show to go wherever wherever the NBA lives. Or you know what TNT they could just do that show and not have the rights to the games. Just watch it, yeah. Just be like everybody turn over to to Turner, whatever channel that's on after the game and you're going to get Chuck Kenny, Shaq, just keep the show going without the rights. We can't have that. We can't lose that. People were excited, though. They're like Round Ball Rock coming back to NBC. I, listen, I love Round Ball Rock. It obviously is like a uh, you you listen to that song and you're like, this is 90s basketball. I just want to remind people who maybe don't watch college basketball. Round Ball Rock also has been back for a while on Fox. And now when I listen to it, I think like, oh, here comes Creighton versus Xavier at 11 a.m. You know, the best start to your day possible is watching the live video of John Tesh performing Round Ball Rock. Yeah. Where he's just bouncing around the room directing the orchestra. Yeah. That gets the blood going. My other hot seat is um, a single better in New Jersey. So this story, this I, I, I feel for this guy because he probably was minding his own business and then woke up on Monday and was like, what the fuck? It was uh, the I think you should leave meme where he's sitting in the back with the tim robinson sitting in the, the back courtroom the hat. Yeah. yeah he's like what the fuck are they talking about me um it's a story about uh one of the sports books in new jersey having like a huge month and uh basically it's all because one guy has been losing a lot and so they said uh when we remove new jersey from the equations this sports book has a 2.9 percent market share in the states it operates in it's New Jersey's market share in March was 23.5 uh, because he's described as the biggest losing player in the regulated market by a mile. So they, it's a guy that bets against UConn. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. Could you imagine just waking up and seeing this and being like, they just call me the biggest loser by a mile? Yeah. I'm happy I don't live in New Jersey because I would definitely be like, wait, is that is it me? That one guy might be betting against UConn and also betting it against the Oakland Athletics every single day. Yeah, and just combination or bet and betting against uh, like anyone to beat Scotty Scheffler. Yeah, God damn, that would suck so bad. Whoever it is, it's a big hater that's lost a lot of money. Yeah, um, and then my cool throne is scouting because we had some uh, post draft stories come out. Albert Breer had a long story about how. The uh, three, three or four through six quarterbacks got selected: Michael Penix, Bo Nix, JJ McCarthy, and we had this anecdote from the Bo Nix uh, meetings with the Broncos. So Bo Nix, the Broncos went out to Oregon uh, to do a meeting with him, and Sean Payton saw that Bo Nix had a backpack and asked him what's in the backpack. And Nix, this is now Albert Breer. Nix reached inside. Grabbed a roll of tape that he explained he'd need for his ankles if he were going to train. He also pulled out a spare pair of football cleats and a lacrosse ball that he said he'd use for rolling out his back. And what wasn't in the bag was just as significant. Everything was football related. All of it. That's good. That's, that's And good. they fell in love with him there. When the world's in that bag. That's so what's good. not in the bag. That's just code for, like, he didn't have any weed. Yeah. That's also against the Fourth Amendment to just check a guy's backpack. Yeah, I just Whatever. I, I just like the stories that come out. Be like, how did the Broncos end up with Bo Nix? Well, let me tell you a story. Sean Payton asked Bo Nix what was in his backpack. Every quarterback should have to empty out their backpack <laughs> and show what's in there. What happens if Bo Nix on that day had, like, a Game Boy and uh, an extra a burner cell phone? And I don't know, like a thong. Yeah, an he AAR probably wouldn't be on the Broncos. An AARP card. <laughs> That's what Michael Penix had. Without a pistol. Yeah, that would that would actually rock. Yeah. I would draft that quarterback. Yeah, he stays ready, stays strapped. For this that. is my gun for anyone yeah. who sh shits on football. So, um, uh, along with the draft, I I learned something last week about the draft. I meant to share it with you guys. Do you know? Because we've talked about it on the show before. What would happen if there was just straight up free agency for every player coming out of college football? It, it would rule. What would that What would that look like? So that almost happened back in, I think it was the late 70s, early 80s. There was a guy that got drafted, got injured two games into his uh, rookie season, couldn't play anymore. He sued the league to try to figure out uh, or to try to make money based on how much he could have got if he was uh, like a, a free agent coming out in terms yeah. of signing bonus. And he won that case. And then he won the appeal for it too. So this was going to be established law that the draft was – uh, against, I guess, against labor laws or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And then the NFLPA made an agreement with the NFL 
okay, we understand that this goes against the existing law, but we'll agree with you to do the draft because we think it's better for the current veterans that are in the league. Yeah. And we like where this is going. So every other league, not just the NFL, every other league professionally was going to have to end the draft if the NFLPA didn't reach a handshake agreement and be like, we know it's against the law, but we're going to let you get away with it to the NFL. Shout out the NFL. Shout out the NFL. Although maybe the NFL not. Is king. This is Mike Florio's big, big topic. He loves talking about how there shouldn't be a draft. Yeah, I mean, you can make the argument that it's definitely, it, it's been great for players to have this draft the way that everything is shooken out over the past like 30, 40 years. Everyone's gotten rich. But also, we don't know what it, what it would have looked like if they Free didn't market, if they yeah. didn't have the draft. If it would be the same league that it is today. But yeah, it was all based on whoever the leader of the NFLPA was shaking the commission's hand, and saying we're going to agree. We're good. We're going to agree to let you break the law on us. Yeah, pretty crazy. Uh, all right, Jake, your hot seat, cool throne. Hey guys, happy to be back. Jake, uh, my Very hot cool. my hot seat is cheese ball man. We had a huge dilemma in New York City. Union Square, thousands of people gathered to watch a man eat cheese balls. And he promoted it all over the city. And it was a giant tub of cheese balls. And then he showed mm -hmm. up, and now people yeah. are calling him frauds yes. for eating a much smaller tub of cheese balls. Yes. I think this is also stolen valor from Philadelphia. Correct. Because yeah, the rotisserie it, chicken it's guy. all based on the rotisserie chicken guy, which developed organically. And the guy only made a big deal out of it when he reached his 40th consecutive day of eating a chicken. Cheese ball man in New York saw that and said, I want a piece of the action. And he also only did it for one day. One yeah. day. One day. I'm not I'm not impressed this is in this. Bullshit. Like, no, this I did bullshit. this twenty times high in my, my best friend's basement yeah. when I was eighteen years old. He should have so one, he false advertising. The fact that he didn't do the big cheese ball thing. I, I wish people had stood up and been like, Hey, this guy's a fraud. You said you do the big cheese ball. The other way this works is yeah, he should have done it if he wanted to do it, he should have done it like the chicken man, where he would have been like, I'm gonna eat one cheese ball a day until I finish this entire container, and then on the last day, I'll eat an entire container. Or you should have eaten a container every day. Yeah. That's what would have been impressive. Like, yeah. eating one container in one sitting, that's not something to brag. That's not something that should draw a crowd. It also pissed me off, like, everyone on Twitter being like, oh, this could only happen in New York, and it was just oh, a, I like, worse, I kinda, a worse version of the chicken guy in I, Philly. I kind of like that part of it, just because it pisses you off. Only in New York. Yeah, well, this is wrong. Yeah, only in New York can you do a worse version of something in Philly. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, so that was interesting. And uh, my cool Only throw. in Philly can you see a home game for the Knicks. True. LeBron, though. Well, oh, yeah, what? Max is LeBron's convinced. Gonna the six, Le to the LeBron's going to be a free agent. Oh, uh, and so Max is thinking, what if he just comes to Philly? I actually am. I would die for this to happen. Yeah. Just same. because the, the, the podcast would reach a new level. Did you see that when Horst said that LeBron is going to see free agency this summer? Yeah, I mean, it I just happened. Well, I, I knew that he was going to have free agency. I, I think he's doing this. He's going to test free agency so that he can be like Lakers. You're going to sign Bronny, right? Yeah, but no, no, no. Sixers are going to draft him six, at sixteen. At sixteen, yeah. Oh, wow. To, to bring I, LeBron, in. I a hundred percent think that would be worth it. If you're if you're even in the conversation for getting LeBron, just take a flyer. Use your use your first round pick on Bronny just to lure him to town because if it's even if he's got like four places he wants to go if one of them has a son that's where he's going to end basically up. kidnapping yeah just kidnap Bronny. yeah okay your cool throne jake my cool throne's travis kelsey signed a big two-year deal there's the retirement rumors but two years 34 million he's back i got a question this might be getting into waters that we don't want to get into um but be careful i got a question so he signed a deal to be the highest paid tight end in the league, right? Right? I believe so. Uh, do we remember a certain player who was married to someone who was very rich, a billionaire, who would take less money because that would help the team because he knew he was married to this woman? I remember that. Does anyone, does that ring a bell? I remember that. Was yeah. that Hank, do you know the answer to that? Mm-hmm. Who was that? Tom Brady. Oh, that was Tom Brady because he was married to Giselle. Do you think maybe Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift, the relationship isn't that rock solid? Because uh, otherwise he would say, hey, why don't I take less? I'm going to be fine because she's a billionaire and we're going to get married and have kids and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I think he knows that there's a prenup coming. Interesting. There's a big prenup coming for that one. I'm just saying. She... He could take less money knowing that if he gets married to Taylor Swift, 
money will never be an issue for him. You know what? If if Taylor Swift was a real fan <laughs> of, the, of the Chiefs, sound, yeah. Listen, <laughs> well, the, the no, argument no, doesn't no, work no. as well when it does. Max. Tom Brady and Giselle did break up. It, right? No, but, no, they, but that's but, not what this is about. That's it, not what this it, is in about. My, in my opinion, if if Taylor Swift was as big of a Chiefs fan as she pretends to be on correct, Sundays, she would realize for the good of the franchise that she should not do a prenup with Travis Kelsey. Therefore, letting Travis Kelsey sign Correct. undervalued contracts with the Chiefs and extending their championship window. She she would give she would she would uh, like Travis Kelsey sitting on their bed and, and Taylor Swift walks over and gives him a little kiss on the forehead and says, "Don't worry, sweetie, money's no problem for us." Sounds like she hates the Chiefs. Yeah. Again, I'm just asking questions. Yeah, I mean, they looked pretty strong there at Mahomes' charity event. But like, how strong, knowing that he just took the most money, being like, "I need to make my money now." They should do Monday Night Raw. Mahomes did it. Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift? Yeah. Yeah, that would rock. <laughs> that would rock. Swifties would become wrestling fans. Basically, what we're saying is that Taylor Swift should give up half of her money to men. Mm -hmm. Is that too much to ask? No. I thought we were about equality. Equality matters. 50%. And if she, w if she was a true Chiefs fan, she would be like, hey, Travis, take the league minimum. Mm-hmm. And let's go win another champion. Yeah, rings. If she's, what? What hang? It sounds like she's, these are all good points, yeah. right? She's only about her personal engagement ring, not a Super Bowl ring. Mm. That's what it sounds like to me. Mm. I yeah. think I think that people out there will agree with us on this. You have yes. to be selfish sometimes, and I think he does. He deserves this title, the highest paid title. No, he's not being. No, he has to be selfish because Taylor Swift is being selfish. Uh, mm -hmm. She's He's, making. She has forced his hand. She's turning another man into a monster. She could basically be like, "Hey, let's let's get some star wide receivers and offensive linemen. Let's do all this. You know what? I'll pay you forty three million dollars a year to be my boyfriend, and you can get league minimum." I'm seeing a pattern here. Maddie Healy was a great dude before Taylor got her hands on him. Yeah. Listen, here's what I'll say: If in the future, Caleb Williams and I ever start to date, and I'm a billionaire, I will take care of him. In that hypothetical. <laughs> but he he's making a lot of money. No, I'll, I'll say, hey, take league minimum. Take less money, sweetie. Yeah. We'll be fine. It's, I, so, mean, I mean, we, we but that's there's because a couple of hoops we have to jump through. We have to date. Also, I have to become a billionaire. But if we get to that point, I'm at least willing to share, unlike Taylor Swift. That's what a supportive partner looks like. Correct. And it's good to see. I'm as progressive as they get. It's good to Swifties. see. It's good to see that there's still some some good people in this world. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. Please clip that. Yeah. <laughs> We're just asking questions. That was, a, that was a great conversation. It's important to have these A great segment. We haven't done that in a while. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Copy, clip that, and then uh, tag Stool Presidente. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let's do uh, our interview with J.J. Redick. Awesome interview. Getting into basketball. We're going to talk about the playoffs. We're going to talk about what's happening with the Lakers, Darvin Ham, Suns, everything. Uh, let's do it. J.J. Redick. Okay, we now welcome on our very good friend, recurring guest. He is a media star. You can check him out on Old Man and, and uh, the Three. You can check him out on Mind the Game Pod. Or you can listen to uh, any of the ESPN basketball games that are going on right now in the playoffs because he's on all the time. It's J.J. Redick. I appreciate you going into all the many things I'm doing right now in terms of the media landscape. It's uh, It's a lot on the plate. You know, we're... We're putting out content for Old Man of the Three and Mind the Game and and uh, obviously traveling traveling a bit for NBA playoffs. Very excited. Yeah, very excited. This is actually great that you're joining us right at this second because I, I this morning, so the, the Lakers got bounced from the playoffs on Monday night. Uh, Nuggets win the series 4-1. to one. The Lakers won one game in the last two years against the Nuggets in the playoffs. I've been getting into it with Lakers fans this morning because there's this idea – when they show the stat that the Lakers were leading for 150, 160 minutes, that the Lakers were right there. And now Darvin Ham's getting blamed by a lot of Lakers fans. I contest that the Lakers did not have a championship roster that was deep enough, that had enough two-way guys, that had enough bigs. Uh, and Darvin Ham, while you can criticize him, and I'm fine criticizing him, he was dealt a hand that was very difficult to beat a team like the Nuggets. What do you think about that? Yeah, here's here's the deal. We 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 can't ascribe uh, the end result and have that be an indictment on someone without the context of how that result happened. And the Denver Nuggets are the defending champion. 
They approach the regular season uh, as well as any defending champion that I can remember going back probably to, you know, the the Golden State Warriors uh, with with Steph and, and KD, right? They, they approached it trying to get a one seed. There's oftentimes a, a little championship hangover. They were they were rolling. They were healthy. You know, Jamal Murray's been banged up for going on like two months now with shin splints and some calf issues. So like they were healthy relative to what they were in the regular season. And it's a it's it's not a great matchup for the Lakers, and it's not a great matchup for for anyone really. You know, I think this Minnesota team probably matches up as well as anyone in the NBA versus the Denver Nuggets. I'm really fascinated by this series. Uh, so to to lay the blame on Darvin Ham when you're playing against the defending champions and you you lose a bunch of close games, you lose on two butter, buzzer beaters. Like I just I don't buy that. I don't buy that. Now, I'm not in that locker room. I'm not in those huddles. So I, I can't speak to that. But if we're just basing it on the result of losing in the first round, uh, I, I just, I don't buy that. Yeah. Um, and I, I want to say one thing real quick, because this this has been bothering me for about, uh, what time is it, 11 o'clock? This has been bothering me for about 10 hours. Okay. Uh, that last play, I do have a problem with that last play, the Jamal Murray game winner. So you've got two guys on the left side of the court for the Nuggets. KCP was on the left wing and Torian Prince's man was in the left corner. They basically clear out a side, allow the ball to get to, get to the middle. Roy Hatchimore and, and Torian Prince, they're literally in no man's land. They've overloaded a side. You can afford to put Roy Hatchimore in help and it looked like Torian Prince was telling him to go there. Like, is is that on Darvin Ham? Right. Is that on Darvin Ham? I don't. I, I'm not buying that. that. Like, if you're a basketball player at the end of a game, hey, Torian Prince, guard two, stunt for me. Let me help on this pick and roll. Right? It, it's that's just basketball. And and Hachimura had a great great season. Him put, being in the starting, I'm not placing the blame all just on Hachimura. I'm just saying there are certain plays within a game that can decide a game that aren't on the coach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it, so even more though. Uh, I, I think, and I've heard this in the media, people being like, well, if the Lakers played anyone besides the Nuggets, like they're the second best team in the West. I just don't think that's true. I think the Thunder are better. I think the Timberwolves are better. I just, th this idea that the Lakers have a championship roster, they just ran into the championship team the last two years. I, AD and, and LeBron were incredible. They were superheroes in, in this series. They just didn't have enough dudes to play against Denver for a seven game series or probably play against the Timberwolves or probably play against the Thunder. I just I really do think it comes down to their roster wasn't deep enough and they didn't have enough guys that they could rely on uh who could play two ways and give a, a bunch of different looks and then when you're the coach and you don't have those like, you know, cards that you can deal out of your hand, it does make you look worse. Yeah, that's that's the NBA and that is the danger of going into coaching. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> which you're not going to do. Definitely not. That yeah. is the danger, right? 100%. Talent, talent wins, depth wins, what roster construction, how pieces fit, all that stuff. That That is the ultimate thing. And uh, look, it's funny because yeah. you, you look in, let's just say regular season, D'Angelo Russell had a great year. Yep. Austin Reeves had a great year. Hatchamore was more than solid. And you had two guys who were going to make all NBA teams in, in Anthony Davis and LeBron James. I think some of it, speaks to not only everybody's like, oh, the depth of the West, the depth of the West. Here's my argument for, for the NBA right now. I think the overall talent depth, meaning the amount of really good players in the NBA is as high as it's ever been. And that depth of talent is spread out more than it's ever been. Mm -hmm. There's not the concentration of three really good players on one team, three really good players on another team. There's the concentration of two or three really good players on a bunch of teams. Yeah. So it, I, I don't think this Lakers team was a bad team. Yeah. I just think they were 
good relative to the rest of the NBA. It's, right. It's good, about, not not championship contenders. That's kind of yes. what I come down to. Yes. It's like yeah, they're yeah, not yeah. The, the 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 media wants to tell us that the Lakers were on the cusp of winning a title if they didn't run into the Nuggets back to back. You're years. listening to the wrong you're listening to the wrong media. I I, yeah. I mean that's where I watch you to the Steve, wrong I watch media. you yeah, it's first take with it, yeah. you're on all the time. You're that's where you're not going to get any coaching. <laughs> you're going to miss yelling at Mad year. Dog and Stephen A Smith too much. We do love you on on TV though because sometimes it feels like you and, and Stephen A or you and Mad Dog are speaking two different languages. Like uh, <laughs> Mad Dog will be doing the, the hot take, like screaming at the camera about the, the old Knicks from the 1970s. And then you're just trying to break down the game in front of them. And it's like you're trying to educate people. Mad Dog's trying to make people mad. And so it's like this conversation, is, you're probably never going to reach a consensus agreement in this conversation, but it's very entertaining TV. Yeah, I, you can you can make a career out of... Um out of uh i don't i don't want to say antagonizing people but i would say like having strong opinions even if i i believe some of those opinions are are not rooted in in reality um but at the end of the day all of this and, and you guys know this and you dan you talked about this when you came on our podcast on the old man of the three I, I guess that was probably a year and a half ago like this is all an escape it's all entertainment yeah and and uh, you know we we when we were talking about doing this mind the game podcast and I thought there was an, a lane for education for, for trying to make the average fan a little more intuitive when watching a game. That's all it is. It doesn't mean that the entertainment portion or the, the, the debate shows are bad that people want to escape. People want to be entertained. And I think there's a, there's a world where you can have both. Yeah. yeah. No, I, sometimes, I agree. sometimes if you do it well, you can do both at the same time. Yeah, yeah, I, I absolutely agree. So, um, another team I want to talk about. So, I, I think we, we, we settled the Lakers. Like they're a good team. They were not a great team. I don't. If you put the best coach in the world, I still don't think the Lakers are winning the title this year. That was kind of my semi defense of Darvin Ham, who I don't think is. Are you playing great. to the algorithm right now? Are you no. playing to the Lakers algorithm? Yeah, I just, I, I <laughs> it's just crazy to me when it, when a team loses and everyone's like, the coach has to be fired. It's like, but maybe the team wasn't that great. Yeah. I don't know if, if the best coach in the league could have taken the Lakers and had them beat the nuggets because the nuggets, right? Like the nuggets in their own way, they're, they're a super team, but they're a homegrown. So they've got great role players. They've got great, they've got star power. They've got guys at multiple positions that can go out and get 30 on any given night and then you've got Jokic. That's just a, a piece of a puzzle that you can't you can't solve. Right. And I'm actually I'm excited to see what happens in the next round because I think maybe you can educate us on this because I'm fighting like an internal battle in my brain over which way the Rudy Gobert Jokic matchup is going to go. On one hand, I think that Gobert is such a good defender that they're going to put him one on one on Jokic, uh, which could go a couple ways. It could have Jokic just go out there and and dominate him because he's not getting help, or it could go like they're going to try to eliminate Jokic's ability to kick the ball out and hit open threes when you do draw the double team. So can you talk us through what that matchup's going to look like, and if the Wolves have a a better chance than most at beating the Nuggets? Yeah. Um, so if you go back to last year's playoffs and games this season, a lot of times and and. The Wolves now are not the only team that does this, but a lot of times uh, teams will cross match with Jokic um, because Denver really wants to score in the paint, and it's not necessarily on drives, right? It's out of cuts. It's Aaron Gordon in the dunker spot. It's obviously Jokic when he gets a deep catch. It's Jamal Murray, Michael Porter Jr. on back cuts. Um, they're not like a a a Oklahoma City, for example, is is. Uh, a heavy points in the paint team, but they drive 63 times a game. They lead the league in drives per game. Shea, Shea Gilgis Alexander has the most drives per game in the NBA, right? They drive the basketball. Denver wants to be in the paint. They do it a little differently. So the counter to that is, and it's also to keep Gobert at the rim, is you put Carl Anthony Towns on him, you put Nas Reed on him, you put Kyle Anderson on him, and Gobert can still sit back there and protect the rim because Aaron Gordon is a non shooting threat. A lot of teams, if I, I say this on broadcast all the time, that shot that teams are willing to live with against the Denver Nuggets is an Aaron Gordon three. Mm -hmm. And so that cross match kind of eliminates some of that need to double because as Jokic gets deeper, Gobert is right there at the rim and 
as he often says, he can be in two sp- two places at once, just like a Wembenyama, right? Th- these guys are that smart and that big and that long that they can be in two places at once and still maybe get a late contest, but also be there to sort of clean up anything, any dump down passes to Gordon. So that's what I would expect Minnesota to do. And even going back to last year, if you remember that first round series, Jamal Murray was incredible as he was throughout the playoffs. Jaden McDaniels punched a wall uh, the last regular season game. So he missed that series. He's an outstanding defender. Uh, he, he, He showed some of that in that Phoenix series in round one. So I would expect Jaden McDaniels to be on Jamal Murray. No Nas Reed either last year. I'm not trying to create an argument for why Minnesota is going to win. I'm creating an argument for why I think this is going to be high level, intense six or seven game series. Uh, both these teams are outstanding. Yeah, I'm very excited for that series. Yep. Um, another question I had, uh, we saw the Suns get bounced in a sweep to the Wolves. Are we done with the super teams? Because if you look around, <laughs> like it does feel... You have the Nuggets, homegrown. You have the Celtics, homegrown. You have even, you know, the Knicks have done a really good job with their roster. The Wolves, homegrown. The Thunder, homegrown. A lot of these teams now that are ascending feel like, you know, they they've gotten the pieces the long term way instead of saying, oh, here's a here's a here's a star. Let's add them to the roster and throw away all of our role players. Do we think this is finally? Like the Suns were, uh, I I saw your whole clip about a failed experiment. Like they, they they're long term invested in these guys, but I don't know how they don't have a lot of flexibility in changing that roster. Correct. Um, I said at the beginning of the year, in in one of our season preview podcasts, like this year could be, and whether it's like uh like stamped, meaning it's it's final, but it could be at least the beginning of the death of the super team. Yeah. Part of that is the new second apron in the CBA. And just a a sort of a brief explainer of that. Uh, We have a salary cap. Um, You can go to a certain point over the salary cap. You pay luxury tax. There's a first apron and then a second apron. Once you get to that second apron, you're essentially hard capped, which means you're really limited in what you can do uh, in terms of transactions. So you have no exceptions. You basically have to sign players for minimum contracts and sign your own draft picks. And obviously the outside of this year, uh, the Suns don't have any draft picks from 2025 to 2030. All of those are either traded away or they, um, they're they swapped, meaning they can't trade them because teams can swap. Let's say 2027, you can swap with them, right? So they're, they're extremely limited um, by that second apron. Uh, and it's because of them going all in on Kevin Durant, them going all in on Bradley Beal. Bradley Beal has a no trade clause. Uh, so yeah, I, in some ways, uh, the, the proof, at least to me, uh, over the last few years, it goes back to the depth of talent, but the proof to me is you need to build, build through the draft Yeah, and then be positioned with a, with a good salary cap situation with good young players with draft picks to then make an impactful trade. Denver did that. They drafted Jamal Murray. They drafted Jokic. They drafted Michael Porter Jr. They've drafted Peyton Watson. They've drafted Christian Brown. They used players they drafted to go out and get KCP, uh, Aaron Gordon. Those are the timely trades. And all of a sudden, all now all the pieces fit, and they've got one of the best, if not the best, starting five in the NBA. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Boston, right? Brown, drafted. Tatum, drafted. Marcus Smart, drafted. Turned him into P- Porzingis. All, Rob Williams, drafted. Uh, they 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 stole Malcolm Brogdon from Indiana two years ago. They used Malcolm Brogdon and Rob, Rob Williams to go get Drew Holiday. So you you have to draft well. That's my point. Like if you want to build a team now, you have to draft well. Yeah. To your, but this is why I say it's not necessarily the death of the super team because certain owners are always going to operate a certain way, and certain owners are always going to think they can shortcut it and buy their way to a championship yeah yeah that's what i, I would it, think like we were talking about that uh on on monday's show if we were owners that's how we would operate right when we got a team we'd just be like yeah <laughs> let's be get Ishbia, some, yeah. kd yeah let's go let's build a 2k KD's team awesome. let's yeah. go build a 2k but team. it's yeah. exciting for the nba that it does feel like we're getting away from that where there aren't the shortcuts and the teams that put in the draft and make the savvy moves and trades are being rewarded like that's good for the league in my opinion I agree, and I think it helps the overall product, which the product should be the game. The product should not be transactions. Yes. And, uh, and look, people are going to live in that world 
forever. Uh, it's what gets people excited on social media. The idea of getting this person in free agency, the idea of getting this person in a trade. I get it. It's exciting. And everybody plays 2K and everybody likes to build out their rosters and get their packs and get their cards and then decide which player they're getting rid of. Like we all want to be a GM in some ways, right? I get it. However, because of more parity, I thought between parity, uh, the depth of talent, uh, the rule changes around minimum games played where you had so many guys. I mean, LeBron and AD played the most games together they've played uh, in their Lakers tenure. Kawhi played more games he's he, since, I think, 2016 or 2017. So these things have created a better regular season. And if anyone was paying attention to that, instead of just using the same old talking points about how load management, load management does not really exist anymore. There's rule. You can't rest two stars in a, in a nationally televised game. Like the league implemented enough policies. Those policies worked. The in-season tournament was an overall success. The plan has been a massive success. There's more. I, to me, the product right now is better than it's ever been in my time in the NBA going back to 2006. Yeah. And that's, I'm glad that you brought that up. Let's not, you know, completely trash the Lakers this year. They won the in-season tournament. Yeah. That's huge. That's huge. Their the mayor, mayor, the mayor of LA congratulated them. It's not a lost season. They had, they had a lot of success. They won one out of two tournaments this year. Also they put, I think, a, I think Greeny put up a banner that the Lakers would have maybe beaten the Thunder or Timberwolves if they had matched up against them in the first round. They would have matched up well. Against yeah, they would have matched up. So that's opponent. huge. Yeah, it's a, it's a good season. That's winning <laughs> basketball in LA, and I'm glad to see it. So, how would you fix Phoenix? Because it seems it seems like they don't really have. Well, can I ask you a question? Those banners yeah. fly forever. I feel like you're laughing can at I those ask banners. You a this is a serious question. Yeah. I want to ask you this question. Why do you think? And, and I don't know how much you guys – actually, you guys joke around, and it's sometimes a bit, so I'll, I'll take you off the table. But why do you think that people like to talk about hypotheticals so much, and why do people like to listen to people talking about hypotheticals so much? Because it's fanfic for dudes. Yeah. It's like this is, this is yeah. gossip magazines for guys. This is how we use our imagination. Guys, once you start yeah, – That's a great point. Once yeah. you stop reading books in, in high school or college or wherever <laughs> – where you, you give up like reading the fantasy books that you used to when you were a kid. This is what you spend your mental energy on. You just imagine like, what if, what if LeBron went to the Celtics? Yeah. Could they win? You could never could be, fit? yeah, you could never be wrong in a hypothetical world too. So you can just be, you know, we, we could debate it forever. I think specifically for the Lakers hypotheticals that have been happening. Um, I think that's just, and you know, this being on first take from time to time, like, the late talking about the Lakers and LeBron is what people will tune into. Mm. So when they're down three zero, you can't be like, Oh, the Lakers are cooked. You have to instead do 20 minutes saying the Lakers would have beaten everyone else. Yeah. You mm. can't, you <laughs> can't let go of that cash. Yeah. Actually, you know what? Crazy to maybe, say. Maybe JJ, maybe you bring this up next time you're on. Uh, if the Dallas Cowboys signed LeBron at yeah. tight end, would they be able to compete for a Super Bowl? Combine all their favorite things together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Uh, I say no. Maybe, maybe, well. No uh, question. I think you probably have to add Aaron Judge maybe as a tight end. Yeah, Aaron Judge, tight end, LeBron, <laughs> wide receiver. Just get everybody. Yeah. Who would be a better wide receiver, LeBron mm -hmm. or Michael Jordan? Ooh. Good question. Who's, more, who's, who's more entertaining? Patrick Mahomes or Steph Curry? Mm. I love, I love Patrick Mahomes now. <laughs> yeah, Patrick Mahomes, I mean, he was he was on uh, Monday Night Raw. Yeah, he gave his rings. To Curry, him. Curry, low key. Would you guys listen to Would you guys listen to someone talking for twenty minutes about uh, Anthony Edwards hypotheticals? Yes, I yes. Him, I find him pretty fascinating. He's yeah. He's okay, I, I actually wanted to ask about him because he is he's such a killer, and I love that. Like that's what sports. I know there's a million things reasons to watch sports. But at the top of my list is watching a guy elevate his game in big moments and have that shit to him where he's like, not only mm. he's going to kill you, but he's going to he's going to do the suck it. He's going to talk his shit. <laughs> um, are you like just watching Anthony Edwards? Are you, are you watching it being like this guy is going to own the league for years to come? Like he has that it factor both on and off court. The, ultimately, the the face of the league and the the whoever kind of is the is the guy, right? Um, you you have to win at at a high level to do that. So that remains to be seen. However, uh, he he's certainly going to be in that conversation for the next ten years. Yeah, uh, he, he is entertaining as a player. He's got like the game that I think people gravitate to, the same way that Jordan had a certain game. Kobe had a certain game. AI had a certain game. Steph, right? There's 
There's the flash, the fundamentals. I mean, some of the footwork stuff that he does is so underrated. Uh, and then he's got, he's got, as you said, the shit to him, right? Yeah. He's, he's brash. He's competitive. I find it fascinating, by the way, because I remember this and I, I want to say I was, I was finishing up my career. Um, but when he was coming out of Georgia, the question marks around him were like, does he love basketball and is, is he competitive? <laughs> Right. And if you watch that guy play in the playoffs and you're like, how is that ever a concern? Yeah. Right. I, I just I don't know. I it's he's he's remarkable. I he Katie said this the other day after the after game four. He's like, that guy's my favorite player to watch in the league. And, you know, I've had a number of players, even in retirement, where I'm like, I, I want to watch this guy. I want to watch this guy. And now, like Anthony Edwards has moved into sort of that tier one of just like if he's on I'm watching the T-Wolves yeah I'm like I was kind of bummed that they swept the Suns because it's like oh we just got robbed of a couple of Anthony Edwards games like I want to I like you know it off nights it's every other night I'm like oh where's my Anthony Edwards game tonight I want to watch him dunk on people and talk shit and Katie and laughing like, Katie was yeah. just like, he couldn't do anything except just laugh when when Anthony yeah he was on when he he's knows like, he's like yeah this guy is this guy's awesome I like watching playing watching him play like right up close and right next to him and it's perfect timing too because i i know that you don't love these debates but uh it does feel like these playoffs are a little bit of a passing of the torch playoffs where you don't have kd steph yeah. or lebron in the second round and you have some of these young whether it be anthony edwards or jalen brunson what he's doing with the the knicks like some of these younger guys ascending it's just always fun when that happens at the same time and you're like this this is great because these are the guys gonna be watching for the next decade we're working on a, a project right now. Um, I think it got announced. It's a, it's a, the, it's like the driver survive of the NBA playoffs. Oh, okay. And um, we're uh, we're like co-producing it, and you know, I remember going back. Uh, Jason Gallagher, who I think you guys know, who yeah. you've been around, you know, our our head of production. We're working on it uh, on the three four two side, and and going back to our conversations uh, all the way back in. October when the season started that was the whole thesis for us going into this season is you know I I, I said uh, this Phoenix Suns thing that's going to be interesting to watch roster uh, do the pieces fit do they have enough depth is there redundancy with their best players like it's gonna be interesting to watch right how much does LeBron have left in the tank right Golden State ah, are they going to be good I don't know Feels like Minnesota's going to be pretty good this year. Feels like Oklahoma City's probably going to make a jump. There could be a passing of the torch. Now, I had no idea that Jalen Brunson was going to put together an MVP-type season. Uh, and certainly if Jokic wins another one, uh, then some of this conversation is moot, and it's just like, no, nah, Jokic is the guy. He's the guy, right? Um, but yeah, this is uh, interesting because Kevin's out, LeBron's out, Steph's out, and those guys have... I don't want to say carried the league, but they've certainly been as integral as anyone uh, for the last, you know, 10 to 15 years. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. You brought up the, the Jokic MVP thing. Um, it's important to have this debate. Do you think that if Jokic won his third MVP, he would be the worst three time MVP winner of all time? Uh, Jokic to me uh, is, is already a top 15 player of all time. Mm. And I know that, that's maybe a hot take. I don't really care. You took Kevin uh, Durant out? What's up? You took Kevin Durant out of the top 15? No. Oh. No, I didn't. You got to take didn't. someone out. Who was number 15? <laughs> you Kevin, can't just... Kevin, what, Kevin wasn't close to 15. Okay, you got to wait. You only, put him in. I you only, put him in. You got to take someone do, out. I only, do, I only do 12. I usually only do 12. Okay. That's why I use the 15, because okay. that gives me wiggle room. Then got I don't it. want to take anybody but out. I can, I, I can read you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, I, I've only ever done a definitive 12, okay. who I think is the 12. The other three three-time MVPs are Moses Malone, Larry Bird, Magic Johnson. Mm. So this mm -hmm. would would that make Jokic the worst three-time MVP winner? Uh, I don't feel I don't feel that way. Mm, so who would you take? Out? I don't feel that way. Moses. I, I say this all the time. You know, you guys love to bait me into these things where you compare eras. <laughs> Legit question. You no, you do, and it's it's fine. But I'll, I'll say this: the the best players in any era would be fine in any other era, uh, save for maybe one era. And uh, the players that killed in their era, they should be celebrated and they should be. Uh, recognized as all-time greats mm. so why would we not recognize 
Nikola Jokic is an all-time great. Yeah, but see what you're why doing are we is – Why are we changing it for modern players? I, I think what you're doing is you're adding Jokic to the top 12 of all time, and if we looked – I didn't say that. 15, top 15. If we looked at it, I think you're probably – top 15 is more like 25, and you're just – someone's got to keep you honest. <laughs> someone's got to keep me <laughs> It's honest. us. That's our job. we got to keep you a, honest. A J.J. Redick top 12 tracker just yeah. to make sure that – that you're not fudging the numbers. I'm taking I'm taking Will Chamberlain out. He's gone. Jokic is in. See how easy that was? Okay. <laughs> you think he actually dropped 100 points? Do I think Will Chamberlain did? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, in, unless I, I've been given reason not to believe. I mm -hmm. mean, he had he had the picture with the sheet of paper, right? So you have to believe it. Yeah, that's as good yeah. as gold. Yeah. yeah. You can't yeah. lie about that. Yeah. Uh, yes. You should just respond with, like, if somebody does ask you that question uh, about Jokic, just say, he's on my Mount Rushmore of three-time MVP winners. Mm. Ooh, there we go. Yeah. Because there's only there four guys go. there. You're good. So, so back yeah. to the Suns real quick. How, how would you fix the Suns? Because that, to me, seems like a, a riddle that's very hard to figure out. Um, like you, you mentioned Bradley Beal's contract. Am I interviewing for jobs right now? Yeah. What is going on? No, I'm, just, <laughs> I, I'm curious because, like, the Suns, it, it seems like they've they've – dealt their way into a black hole where it's like i i don't know how they get out of this over the next five years but there's got to be some way out right if you're being creative how would you fix the suns win shares per 48 which is uh the the stat that is most closely associated with whoever wins the mvp all time in the nba number two is michael jordan all right that that tracks uh number one is nikola jokic Mm, just want to mm. throw that out there. I know you okay. guys don't like advanced stats, but oftentimes they just love reinforce them. what the eye shows us. Yeah. I love them. Here's an advanced uh, stat. Michael Jordan was 6-0 and in the finals. I love them. <laughs> All right, keep fine. going with your point. <laughs> How many times did he get to the final six? Okay. Yeah. Mm. Um, so, Phoenix. Um, you know, it's interesting. It's a it, very interesting question. I would look at sort of team building in a very holistic way um, beyond just, oh, we got to trade this guy or trade that guy, or we got to, we got to, you know, revamp the coaching staff. Like I don't, I wasn't in that locker room, so I don't know. I would say in general, um, the exit interviews are oftentimes very revealing and you have to look at any roster, any team and look at how personalities mesh together and how skill sets mesh together. And it's not easy because all 29 teams are also competing for something and, all, and also want to win a trade or, or win a transaction. That's the difficulty of being in the front office. But if you can find the right formula, and it might take three months, it may take six months, it may take three years. Uh, but you have to be willing, I think, to, as an owner, you have to be willing to be patient with that. Uh, and look, I'm not, that was not a, that's not a shot at Ishby at all. Um, I, I think we've seen a number of new owners come in and make moves right away and want to win. And that's not really how the NBA works and they learn and they get better and they, be, they become great owners. The, 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 one of the best like examples I have of like an owner who didn't did, do that was Steve Ballmer. Mm -hmm. Steve Ballmer took over in 2014 after the Donald Ster Sterling uh, uh, saga, and it was like 15 and 16. I remember he he would meet with us. We would have dinner with him. He would ask us questions. He made no big decisions other than, I think in 16, we had new uniforms. But in terms of like our roster, nothing big, coaching, nothing big. Then in 17, Lawrence Frank went from our coaching staff up to the front office. Lawrence Frank spent like a year going around literally the world and going to different teams and saying, all right, man, United, how do you operate? All right, Seattle Se Seahawks, how do you operate? And he figured out how to build out a proper infrastructure in the front office. If you remember, we really didn't have a front office under Don Donald Sterling, right? It wasn't until Bomber got there. He took his time. He didn't, he didn't make any crazy transactions. He took his time. Uh, and, and, you know, obviously Kawhi's injury probably keeps them from – uh, a championship, uh, but I think they've done it the right way. Yeah. So it's interesting with the the exit interviews. You've been through a few of them, I would imagine. How how does that go? Who conducts them? What questions are asked? And uh, how honest are guys? 
I, I mean, I was always, always honest, especially yeah. later, later on in my career. Every team is different. Uh, there were some teams where you would have three different ones. You might have one with the owner. You might have one with the front office. You might have one with the coaching staff. Other ones, you just have one. You'd have one with uh, the front office and the coaching staff. Uh, I think in Dallas, I actually had all three together. It was Cuban, Donnie Nelson, and Rick Carlisle. And they were just like, hey, you didn't play. Trade didn't work out. Probably going to retire. Uh, feel free to just let loose. Tell us, Tell us what you think. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's got to be nice to just just unload and be like, I've been thinking about this for a while. I would just <laughs> here you go. Take yeah. it, get out your get out a pen and paper because I'm going to go off for a while. I would just pit everyone against each other. I'd be like, I just finished up with KD. Like I'd meet with Bradley Beal. I'd be like, I just finished up with KD, and he said it was all your fault, Bradley. What do you think? Like an interrogation. <laughs> yeah, you, know yeah, yeah. you know what's you know what's funny <laughs> is uh, not not necessarily teammates, but I, I I've I, there's been some people that work for organizations that I've played for. That did exactly that. Yeah, yeah. They're all trying really to save. Their, they're all trying to it's save really their own job. Yeah, they're yeah, all trying to save really their own job. Who who was that person? Can you name their name? Guys, we've gone over time. Uh, all right, all right. Is there like a, uh, <laughs> a is there a stop snitching thing? Like you don't you don't talk about another teammate when you're in those interviews? Mm. Uh, I never. I, I I never felt like you. I don't think I don't think guys snitched on their teammates. I, I don't think it was like that. I think it was more when certain guys would be like up for free agency or if like, you know, like even in 17, I had a terrible first round and I knew like no one had to go in. No, none of my teammates had to go into the front office or to Lawrence Frank or Doc Rivers and be like, Hey, we really have to bring JJ back. How's that gone for us? <laughs> yeah. Like, no, no, they'd be like, yeah, it's, it's probably pretty much said I was turning 33 and we'd gone on a four year run and didn't get the result we wanted. I, I, Figured it was likely I was going to be out of there, and they weren't going to offer me a contract. Yeah, what's what's harder the the exit interview with your front office and coach, or the exit interview that players do with Shams? I've never talked to Shams. Yeah, so I don't know. A lot of know. players do, or and what, those articles are ready to go the minute a team gets bounced. What about when uh, when Darvin Ham goes into LeBron's office and Le LeBron starts conducting the exit interview? How do you think? <laughs> what do you think he's going to say to LeBron? LeBron's corner office. Yeah. <laughs> You guys are ridiculous. All right, I, I got some basketball questions. Thunder, unbelievable story. The yeah. how the NBA usually works is teams have to climb the mountain. They have to have you know playoff, get close, get close, then jump over the 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 hurdle, right. the last hurdle. The, the Nuggets are the perfect example in the last few years. The nut, the the Thunder have been called too young, but if the Thunder can win it all, I guess that's the first question: Can they win it all? And if they do, what happened? Like, do you see this team being able to actually? kind of buck all the trends and be like, yeah, this is their first real playoff experience and they went all the way. I, I could see a scenario where they are in the NBA finals and, and could win a championship. Yeah, I, I could see that scenario. Um, what would have to happen? First of all, health. Uh, second of all, um, I think you have to have in certain matchups a series where Chet Holmgren uh, shoots the shit out of the ball. Mm -hmm. and forces the defense into making some tough decisions, uh, i.e., are you switching um, you know, a five-man on to Shea? Are you switching a five-man on to Jalen Williams and, and, and not you know, playing off of Chet Holmgren? He kind of unlocks their spacing, right? All those drives, when he's on the court, it, it matters. So him, him shooting the ball well, um, he's been one of the best defenders in the NBA this year. Uh, Lou Dort. Uh, we saw in the first round just in Brandon Ingram shit for four games. Uh, so he's staying out of foul trouble, defending at a high level. Um, Jalen and Shea have to be, they have to be who they are. They have to be stars. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think enough people realize how good Jalen Williams is. Um, like o Oklahoma City, wh whatever you think of Chet as a second year guy, rookie, whatever, Jalen Williams is a, is a star in the NBA. Um, you know, he's not a superstar, but he is a star and he is a true number two. He's fucking phenomenal. Uh, and then they, they have to shoot. They were one of the best three point shooting teams, not necessarily at high volume, but one of the best three point shooting teams all season long. And they have to shoot it well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you forgot Dortcher chamber, Lou Dort. I love watching. Lou I said, I said Lou Dort. I okay. said Lou Dort. Yeah. Lou Dort yeah, is I said he was it, in Brandon Ingram shit all, yeah, all, I mean, all four games in that series. He's the, he's the best because like having one of those guys is so important where it's like, we're just going to put him on our, on your best player and just make life. Yeah. Your best player still might score, but he's going to make it hard for him every single night. Yeah. 
I would also and say how about, how about Giddy? How about Giddy when they created separation there in game four? Giddy makes three straight threes in like three minutes. Like there's another thing like that has to happen. Like yeah. he's got to be he's teams are playing off of him. He's got to be willing to shoot threes. And it, you know, if he goes through a series and makes 35%, all right. And all right. Much you like got a shot to win. Much like the uh the Mahomes and Travis Kelsey State Farm commercials, you kind of know that they're gonna be they're gonna be in the Super Bowl probably. Same thing with Oklahoma City and the What a Pro Wants, What a Pro Needs commercial, where everybody's absolutely in love with that thing, and you know they're going to want to keep them around for as long as possible. Mm-hmm. I, I know, I know you're being facetious. You like I'm that? Well, no, that's I'm, I'm well aware of the discourse on Twitter wants, right now. What a Pro Needs, it's so good. Whatever makes uh, you guys, happy. We we've neglected the East a little bit. We talked, you know, a little bit about the Knicks. Uh, they're playing against the Sixers tonight, so when this episode comes out, that will be old news. Uh, what's your official prediction? Don't look at your watch. We got you for another thirty-five minutes. Easy. No, I'm, I'm. Somebody from ESPN is texting me my schedule for this week. Oh, they're so I'm like trying to figure out. They're like you're I'm talking about my take. <laughs> There's no, a I'm sniper outside out your house. What game I'm gonna have Friday? Yeah. Sorry, guys. What game? Do you want to announce it right now? What game are you gonna have Friday? I'll have uh, Game Six in Dallas. Oh, game okay. Six in Dallas. Okay. All right, so watch yeah, Clippers, but yeah, the the, Dallas. the East. Uh, Sixers, yep. Knicks, quick prediction. You'll look very smart if you get this right. Uh, for this series or for tonight? For tonight. I don't do one game predictions. I fuck one game predictions. All right, so I don't predict the series. I think I think the Knicks are going to win the series. Okay. Okay. So do the Knicks do the Knicks pose a threat to the uh, presumptive Eastern Conference finalist Boston Celtics? The, uh, they do. Um, they do. A, a lot has to go right, uh, but I. It's hard for me to like dismiss what exactly this Knicks team is, uh, because you know we we have talked we have talked for years now about this like heat culture thing. Mm-hmm. Like you have to you have to kill the heat. The heat are not going to like give in. They're going to fight to the death, right? And I think this Knicks team is similar. Uh, they pursue offensive rebounds like better than any team I've seen in recent memory. If you guys remember like eight to 10 years ago, teams refused to send people to the offensive glass. Like the offensive rebounding rates plummeted. Everybody was so worried about transition defense. And this Knicks team is just phenomenal on the offensive glass. They've got a true leader and I'll say it a true one, a, Ooh, I like a true one, a, I agree. Jaylen Brunson, a true one, a in Jalen Brunson. Um, yeah. They, they they pose a threat. They yeah. pose a threat. I, I said this when they made the trade for OG. Um, initially, I, you know, I was like, all right, they won that trade, and it's not to say Toronto didn't win that trade for them either with getting RJ and and uh, Emmanuel quickly. The Knicks became a better team because it was a better fit, right? OG is a better fit. What else did that trade do? It allowed Miles McBride to move into the starting lineup. So the loss of quickly, which I thought could potentially be an issue, Miles McBride, you know, last month and a half of the season, 15 points a game, 43% from three, like he filled that role. OG with that lineup, he makes them better. So by the end of January, I said, look, I think this is probably depending on seeding and how playoff matchups shake out. This is probably a conference finalist team. I would expect them to be in the, I've said that many times this season. That that is a real possibility. Yeah. So I'm not I'm not surprised that they're in a position where they got to win one more, one more game and then one more round and they're, they're they're there. As a future coach, let me throw out an idea for you that I've been working on. Uh, Joel Embiid always runs out of gas. Has any team ever thought about in the third quarter? Because you know you got to sit him at some point because you can always run out of gas. Sit him for like seven minutes. Take nothing but shot clock violations and then do nothing but foul the other team at the end of their shot clock and just hope that the lead doesn't get too big. You put in all your bench guys, you just pass okay, the so ball around, saying, and then oh, you I wait. Oh, I see what you're saying. So, and so, then you so wait, you're yeah, you're just burning time. You're literally like running you're burning out the clock. Real, you're burning real time, <laughs> Yes, too. yes. You're burning because the yes, fouls, yes. there's a pause, yeah, you're and taking he's, all 24 seconds. So a, a seven-minute break yeah. could potentially turn into – like a 35 or 40-minute break in real time. Correct. He basically, he can go take a shower. He can, like, go through warm-ups have again. A, have a meal, maybe. Yeah, just be like, oh, no, this, the fourth quarter is now the first quarter. Have you thought about that? 
I, I haven't thought about that. It's an inter- interesting strategy. If I get if I get one more Knicks games, uh, Knicks game in this series, I will ask Nick Nurse about that. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll pose that question to him in the pregame coaches meeting. I like that. Put that on your PowerPoint for your next coaches interview. Where's like, the, here's a strategy. You could use all your dead ball fouls one right after the other, and then have substitutions at every single foul. Yeah, and so you can get at least twelve minutes. Have him walk real way. slow. Maybe get like a big. Uh, like Samoan guy and have him walk real slow onto the court. Utah sometimes does that with their defensive subs in football. Do that. These are all good ideas. All right. You're just upset uh, okay, you haven't right, thought right, about right, this. I got, we, I got, a, I got two more questions. Getting yeah, out you're thought. mad. You're, you're, mad. Getting, you're getting outthought on part of my take right now. Mr. X's and O's never thought outside the game. Uh, okay, I have a couple last questions. I know you got to go in a second. Uh, you are uh, with DraftKings. We're with DraftKings. One series we haven't talked about, Mavs Clips which is going to be uh, game five on Wednesday night. Awesome game. Can you give us a pick? And maybe we'll add one, and then we'll, we'll, we'll tell the people this is what we like. What do you think? It, like, it could be a prop. It could be a, a spread, whatever. Give us, give us what you think is going to happen in this game. I'm not great at one game things. Actually, yeah. I did this yesterday for our YouTube uh, video series, Islands in the League. We, we it, DraftKings uh, presents that. It's like a 30-minute show. And uh, the end of the show is we always touch on two or three uh, sort of lines or whatever. And uh, based on the odds of this series, Vegas is basically – it's a pick em series, right? It, I think it's like plus 185, plus 190. So not a whole lot of advantage to picking either team in a 2-2 series. I would – I would I, – here's here's what I think. Luka's going to have a big game five. Okay. That's Love what that. I think. So whatever you want to do with that, I think Luca's going to have a big game five. Okay. I think we maybe go Luca and and playoff P. Luca playoff P. I had I had Kyrie over four and a half assists. Ooh. That would play into the Luca factor. Yeah, too. Luca playoff P and Kyrie. Mm. Mm. That mm. that sounds good. It sounds really good to me. Yeah, that sounds really good. You like that, JJ? You like I do. that? Also, James I Harden do. off two days of rest. That's true. That's big for him. Do you have? When was the last time you played basketball? Do you still shoot? Not really. You got to really. come to our office. Bro, I uh, we, we I I don't get Bulls games because they're so mediocre. I know they're the definition of mediocre. But yeah, um, I I I do. I've been promising my oldest son that we'll do a like a late summer, early fall trip to Chicago. Yes, so if that happens. We will come through. He will obviously love to to get in the gym. I played. We did a random uh, Sunday morning pickup uh, with uh, my travel team and the parents and we just kind of mixed in four groups you played to five and then the next group would come on and that was like in october that was the last time i played but i, I mean i was playing against nine-year-olds so like yeah i wasn't really playing and then i woke up the next day and i felt like i strained my calf and i'm so fearful because of my achilles injury my last year that i'm gonna tear my achilles so i probably won't probably won't play again to be honest with you i like how you said my travel team i thought it was like the team the team you travel with not your Dude, actual like no, nine year old you know travel. You know team. what? You know you know what is crushing to me. I had to I had to stop coaching them after uh, our last. Our, they they just had one this past weekend that I wasn't at. So once the playoffs started, I I went to our Monday practice and I just said, guys, I'm sorry. Like uh, I'm gonna miss every weekend. I yeah. can't coach you anymore. There's like it's impossible. Okay, I have one last question, JJ. It's the rowback question. R H O B A C K dot com. Promo code TAKE, 20% off your first purchase. Q-zips, polos, hoodies, joggers, shorts. Roback.com, promo code TAKE. This has been great. Uh, we love having you I love you the on. Roback question, by the way. Yeah. I know I say this every time I come on the show. You mm-hmm. know, we did this for a while. We yeah. did this for about six months last year. We had the Roback question, the last question. Great gear. Do you think you're in good enough standings with Duke that uh, your sons, no matter how they turn out as basketball players, will at least get the spot as 15th man? Because that would like be awesome. A, like a walk-on? Yeah, right. I think you are. I think so. Yeah. I think so. I mean, that, that I would so. rule. Like, I they're, don't know. They're what, actually they're going to, to Duke camp this summer. Oh, great. That yeah. sounds like fun. That sounds First awesome. Look. First look. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure they're going to learn so much. They're going to learn about the brotherhood. That's going to be great. Seems like a lot of guys are leaving the brotherhood. Here's how you take a charge properly. Yeah. Okay, we're going to do. Here's, here's 30 minutes on slapping the floor. Yeah. Here's yeah. how if you lose the game, you can tell everyone that it's just a game and it doesn't really matter. But if you win the game, you go into the other coach's locker room and you try to coach the other team. These you're, are all things you're, you're going to learn. <laughs> no, you're, you're, you're anti-Coach K bit. It's, I've, I've witnessed it and seen it for years. i, I got to tell Pete you, I'm, I'm starting. Yeah, Pete Gaudet. When was the last time you talked to Pete? When was the last time you talked to Pete? Yeah, Pete Gaudet. 
justice? I don't know. Okay. Well, maybe you should reach out and just ask how he's it's, doing. It's sad because like he he had to absorb all those losses, and then he doesn't even get the the brotherhood reaching out to him to check in and see how he's doing. He's probably sad all the time with all those losses. Brothers got to check on brothers. Yeah. Pete, if you're listening, he's an AWL, longtime yeah. stoolie. Um, Pete probably care does about listen. You. He's probably like, yeah, you guys we, have my back. We They're care the about only you, Pete. people in media. This is the real brotherhood. Pete. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Was right. this fun for you? <laughs> JJ, you you are the best. We we do like you, JJ. Yeah, we we love having yeah. you on. I even even when you you had that weird rant where you like made fun of fans and you're like fans don't want to be don't want to learn. I I even prefaced my tweet defending you, not really defending you, saying I like JJ a lot. So, you know what's funny? I I I, I asked a question. That's all I did. I didn't yeah. make fun of anyone. I asked a question. No, you called us dumb. You had a a conversation no, I, with fans. <laughs> I said. Do fans even want to be educated? It's a valid question. Sometimes Some people don't, and that's yeah, fine. I don't. Yeah. I wasn't. There wasn't. There was no judgment. There was no judgment. I was more upset because Stephen A. said that uh, Kevin Durant has done a bad job of educating fans, as if that's his job, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's not it, his. I job. I thought it was Kevin Durant's job to go play basketball and and be all NBA and try to win a championship. That seems like his job. Yeah, that's but what to, he's getting paid to do. To your point, a lot of times we don't want to learn. No, a lot of times we just want to be bad. We just like, want to talk about the Lakers if they they would have beaten the Thunder. Yeah, like when when Duke beat JMU this year, I didn't want to learn about why Duke's offense worked. Yeah, I was just like, "Fuck Duke, these pieces of shit." Yeah, there are some times when I watch a game that I have to make a choice: Am I watching this game through a critical lens? and actually paying attention or as if I'm just fucking watching it as like a fan and just chilling yeah and it's entertainment and I'll I'll like tune in for 3 minutes and then kind of zone out and then tune in for 3 minutes and then it's like all right it's the last 8 minutes all right I'm going to lock in yeah mm-hmm. like I, it's, it's it's an escape it, yeah i like i like just having basketball on there's yeah. nothing wrong with that yeah yep. all his life all right well jj everyone go check out his podcast uh and you'll hear him calling games do tell nick nurse about my strategy i think it would work um, and best of luck for your future interviews for head coaching jobs. Thanks, guys. Thanks, JJ. For having me on. <laughs> Appreciate the conversation. Thank you for having me on. Yes, yes. Not All right. thank you for none of the fucking digs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, JJ. All right, guys. We'll see you, man. See you, man. JJ Reddick was brought to you by Verizon, our great friends at Verizon. I'm really excited for the NHL playoffs. I love seeing teams advance i love seeing overtime games overtime hockey i love the periods of the week so many great periods in this year's playoffs fortunately the caps are out but it does look like the rangers are a wagon and verizon's fast reliable network lets you stream the games and the draft or on the go you can watch at home you can keep up with all the action verizon has you covered Verizon's the best, by the way. I'm a Verizon customer. I've been a Verizon customer for a very long time. Same. I would not use anything else. Verizon makes it easy to save on streaming the Stanley Cup playoffs for a limited time. They're offering a great deal on the Disney bundle, which includes Disney Plus, Hulu, and ESPN Plus. You can stream select Stanley Cup playoff games, including every game of the Stanley Cup final on ESPN Plus. For those of you out there that might not have multiple TVs, in my main room, I've got two TVs I watch, but sometimes during this time of year, I need to have three games on, four games on. Guess what? I've got a tablet, got a phone, got my uh, my headgear, the Apple Vision Pro. I need to be streaming on all these devices in order to watch the most sports possible at once, and I use Verizon for that. It's so easy. Visit verizon.com slash barstool to learn more. That's verizon.com slash barstool to learn more. Okay, let's wrap up the show with FAQs. Henry? Yes. FAQs? Hey, fellas. Hey. Hey. Long time AWL, and this is something I've always been curious about. Every time Big Cat introduces a guest, he says we have a very, very, very special guest. Not every time. He uses a different amount of varies for different guests, usually Correct. ranging from one to four varies. Correct. What is the criteria behind getting more varies versus less? Well, does I he make it up ahead of time, or does he come up with it on the fly? Not, not to answer for you, Big Cat, but also there is one. There's a couple times I can remember where Big Cat said we have a special guest. Yeah, and that's the ultimate. So I think Screlly was like that. Also, there's been a time where I said we have a guest. A guest. Yeah. That was Aaron Rodgers. Yep. Yeah. Um, no, I don't make it up ahead of time. It's usually based on vibes. Usually, recurring guests get very, very, very. I think in person. The hype, the hype gets bigger. the hype gets bigger. Yeah, it's kind of a way to just you know it makes someone feel at ease. Like, hey, you're very, very, very special. 
just don't let any of the guests know that I do that for almost all of them. I think Jameis Winston got a record amount of varies. I, you know what? I'm going to, at some point in the next three months, I'm going to do an interview. I'm going to try to hit like seven varies. Just keep going. Get a big dog. Yeah, yep. we're going to get a big dog. Be the entire interview. Yeah. <laughs> very, oh, hold on one sec. Very, very, very. We're going to get Skip Bayless on this. Someone randomly asked me that the other day, and I was like, yeah. Yeah. Hey, where's Mr. Pear? I thought we were doing a pick. Mr. Pear is six and two. Mr. Pear is a very, 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 Mr. very Pear special need a turtle. Friend. Mr. Pear is having some issues with. Uh, actually, we should get two turtles. I think he needs a friend. Have them, or we put a rat in there. Have them fight like battle bots. Yeah, Mr. Pear. He's gonna pick the Clippers and uh, the Mavs game because we we we've, we've taken him off the show while he tried to figure it out. Since he's six and two, I feel like the people are owed a pick. Especially because this is the biggest game. It's game five. But does that mean that he's just he's red hot on the Instagram lives? Mm. And we're just taking him off? Okay, fine. Tune into part of my take Instagram for Mr. Pear pick? Yeah. All right, fine. No Mr. Pear pick. He has been awesome on those picks. Yeah, I know. He's six and two. He's hot as fuck. Any more out of the office summer activities planned for the group? Enjoy the disc golf and Dimplehead competitions. Ooh. Yes, uh, we have a couple trips planned right now. Yeah, um, beer something, Olympics, something oh. brand <laughs> beer Olympics. We are still. I want to say very clearly, as of right now, we're very, we're very committed to going to beer Olympics. We can't back out. We won't. We can't. I mean, I'm we not in it. We can't. Right. We can't. We can't. we can't back out. As of this moment, we, we can't, can't back. We out. We cannot back out. We can't. I mean, who could who could turn that down? I'm yeah, feeling but, pretty sick already that week before. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we have uh, besides grit, grit Week, which obviously we're going to be doing Grit Week in August. Um, we have a couple other things planned for some fun activities, and I do want to play frisbee golf again. Although we we were talking, we want to play frisbee golf non camera, which doesn't really help this listener's question just because we've never done it without cameras. Yeah. So it'd be fun to just actually play the game. Uh but we'll 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 bring cameras. We're thinking about doing it maybe on the special trip we have planned in July. Yeah. And we also have a we have another trip in July of uh maybe the pardon my bake. Mm -hmm. Maybe hang out, do some pool games. Maybe do the mushroom golf. Maybe mushroom, mushroom golf. golf. Yeah. Yeah. So we got some good, we got some fun stuff. And we are definitely for July 4th week, Tim Woods. Right? Yeah. Tim Woods. By the way, did you guys see Tim Woods uh tweet the other day? I gotta try to find it. It was so Tim Woods. I fucking love him so much. Oh fuck. Keep going, Hank. I'll try to find it. I'll try to track it down. I screenshotted it just to bring it up to you guys. Hello, PMT boys. The topic is Soggy Sorrows. Mm -hmm. Is there a reason it has disappeared, and can we expect it to make a comeback? I mm. think Max might have put it into Soggy no. Sorrows because he would be just wet all the time. Much like the the you guys not betting against JMU, I think one of you guys didn't want to do Soggy Sorrows. Uh, not true. Ended. I absolutely did Soggy Sorrows after the double doink. I, I didn't say it was you. That was the last time I had a big loss. I've, there I was other ones. We've all done Soggy Sorrows. Right, but that 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 was my recollection of like, one of you guys were like, I'm not doing Soggy Sorrows. And then after that, I was like, well, if you got like, I'm not doing Soggy Sorrows. All right, fine. Here's the deal. We're going to bring back Soggy Sorrows. It has to be a team that has championship aspirations. If they lose, we'll do Soggy Sorrows. And, but play is anyone in the playoffs a... Uh, well, who, let's count the teams that have championship aspirations. The, the Caps. Should we do Soggy Sorrows for the Caps? No, they're, yes. they didn't have championship aspirations. They were in the playoffs. We did not have, did championship, not have championship aspirations. aspirations. So we had a, a minus thirty six goal difference. Who has right? championship aspirations? Uh, I do not. Uh, I do not. Celtics. Oh, okay. And Bruins. Yeah. Okay. So we'll do Soggy Stars if those teams lose. What about other teams? What about the Islanders? Yeah, what about the Islanders? Memes. They're already out. Uh, we're going four straight in a row. Okay. Okay. What about the 76ers? Memes is just like a walking soggy sorrow. Dead. Okay, but you have Le <laughs> but you have LeBron aspirations. I do have LeBron aspirations. So you should do soggy sorrows if they don't get LeBron. Uh, do the Bears sure, have championship fine. aspirations? Yeah. 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 All right. I found it. I found it. I found it. I found it. Uh, this woman tweeted. Uh, oh, someone tweeted. We don't talk about it, but explicitly asking for consent can ruin a vibe. This woman quote to you said, this dude's a dumbass. Have you ever heard a raspy may I in your ear? It's divine. Tim Woods replied, asking for consent when you already know you have it is literally the best. <laughs> like there's no better thing in life. 
<laughs> fucking yeah. love Tim Woods. I love Tim Woods. He's he's <laughs> he's one of a kind. He fucks. Definitely. <laughs> With consent. <Big> time. <laughs> Double consent. <laughs> what was it? Where were we? <laughs> I'll, I'll go last one. Where, where, where were we? Where were we? You, <laughs> if LeBron doesn't go to the I'm six- assuming it was you based off how, how, how quickly you defended yourself, but you stopped doing Soggy Sorrows now. We're bringing I did not you, stop you doing do Soggy Sorrows. I did Soggy Sorrows. I may, Someone find the, the list of Soggy Sorrows. I did it. I've done it. I may have denied Soggy Sorrows at one point. I was not the one who denied it. Hank, find me saying I denied it because there's not. Well, been a it was loss. it was behind the scenes. It was like we're doing soggy sorrows. No, we like, I'm not but doing soggy, soggy sorrows has to be a loss that actually like it can't be like the Bulls lost a playing game. Soggy sorrows has to be like a real soul crushing loss. I remember doing it for double doing. Yeah, because you can't water down mm-hmm. soggy sorrows. Right. So it's championship aspirations, which happens to be the Celtics and Bruins. Great. Uh, hey, PMT gang, it's Matt from Oregon. Behind the jeans, who is the oh, okay. biggest hog on the show? Thanks. Not me. I don't know that we've seen each other's penises. Well, I guess <laughs> we, we kind of have, have. Have I seen anyone's penis? Hank's got a decent wrench. Uh, PFT's got big balls. I've I've small everything. I've me- meaty clackers. Meaty clackers. I mean, what what about you guys in the booth? Like you got the the crown is up. Knowing what we have in here, I think the crown is for the taking. Clackers. That's my answer. Memes could have a hog. Shane might have a fucking Shane might no, Pug. Shane might have an OnlyFans. Dude, Pug. I don't I don't got a Pug hug. is dragging a wagon. Pug, you got a wagon? Pug, you got a wagon? No, Pug. Okay. <laughs> Shit. Might be Hank. Hank might be the big dick on campus. You might be, yeah. Also that's Jake has Jake's been awfully quiet. He has. Jake, you got a big one? Maybe. Oh, okay. okay. Maybe. Should we measure? <laughs> no. Why not? I'll go first. Three and a half inches. You're talking. Were we talking soft? No, that was hard. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm the leader in the clubhouse. <laughs> Submit your score. <laughs> Sh- shocking news: uh, local sports podcast not exactly packing baby forearms. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, what do you want me to say, dude? <laughs> oh, we, yeah, we're not. Uh, it is always funny whenever we do like athletic competitions. People like. You guys suck. Yeah. That's why we talk about sports. Yeah. yeah. I just like the phrase behind the jeans. Behind the jeans. Uh-huh. That's good. We, maybe we do doc- maybe we get uh, all of us get caddies. They have to fill out a scorecard. <laughs> <laughs> no legal stuff. All right. Good show, boys. Uh Pug, three in a row. Let's do some numbers. Ma- uh, Max, have you ever gotten 20. this? Max, have you ever gotten this? Not, not yet. You haven't gotten this? Not yet. PFT, mm-hmm. you ever gotten this? You didn't answer your question. I said not yet. That's not a valid question. Big that's a, question. Have that's you ever got? Have time. you ever gotten this? Not yet. No, it's a yes or no question. No. Oh, that's PFT. Have you ever I haven't gotten got it yet. Yes, oh, good okay. answer, PFT. Uh, okay, numbers. Eighteen. Forty-six. Twenty. Ooh. Three. Eight. Three. 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 Combined eight. forty and Nine, six. Nine, Pug. Okay. 21. I'm gonna That's go good math. S- <laughs> it's not 70. Math. That isn't math. I'm going to go 73. <laughs> 73. Oh, I love Hank. Just combine 40 and 6. <laughs> 43. Pug, if you win this one, is 99 bad for the league? You might have to take it out. Yeah. It's a hot ball. Looks like a 61. 61. Oh, if you just combined 60 and 1, you would have had it. Love you guys.